Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Yeah. Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. It's how they run, homie. Look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Can't stop talking You're actually being about serious. It. I'm being, being Can't serious. Stop First of all, I would love to see the conversation <laughs> with you and Ludacris for four hours. For four hours. Four hours. Like, what was that about? Oh, anyway. my God. You know what it was? It what? was um, we had built an app at GoTV called Hip Hop Official. And, um, are you joking or are you being serious? No, I'm being very serious. And I told him about it, and I connected him to the producer of it. And we used to do... You know, reviews of new drops, because you don't call it an album, don't call it a CD, maybe three, four songs. Did he tell you about his Cadillac grills? Yeah. <laughs> Did no. you check out his... He was he was actually very <laughs> cool. He was excited about he about some of his songs were going to movies, yeah. and he wanted to do that. <clears throat> awesome. You, you get that soundtrack stuff, and you make money on it. I yeah. Remember. Well, like well, I say all the time, Tom, nobody's more hip-hop than the business. No. Shoot. Hell no. No, but actually it was... <laughs> kidding me? He was, this is a guy that comes to the office listening to Hit Him Up every morning. <laughs> Hit Him Up. a very unique uh, taste for him. Anyways, okay, folks, if you just joined in, welcome to the podcast. This is Home Team Today. We got a lot of topics. Um, I got uh, 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 javelins I want to talk about. The amount of missiles, javelin missiles we've given to U.S. and, and we've given to Ukraine. And if you see a couple of the numbers, I saw, I couldn't believe it, by the way, on how many contractors U.S. dealt with. Just 30 years ago, 1990, to how many we are today, and where the CEO of Raytheon and, and, North, and Northrop Grumman, these guys are telling America to say, listen, all this javelin you're sending to Ukraine, you don't even know how long it's going to take us to rebuild them. You're running out. So, by the way, the supply shortage on that, we'll cover that, cars. I'm going to show you a video. Same dealership, just eight months ago, what it looked like versus what that dealership looks like today okay. okay today in february we'll see that uh, clip as well obviously we got to talk about the article that came out from wall street journal talking about lab leak most likely origin of covid19 pandemic energy department now says and mainstream media says they don't know what they're talking about apparently they've lost their minds larry summers uh discusses the uh, interest rates as well as yell and tom's got some thoughts on that two actors both great actors woody harrison from Harrelson. his best movie, Harrelson, the best movie he ever played in, which was obviously White Man Can't Can Jump. Guy. Come on now. And he called out everybody Ooh, on man. SNL. It was so quiet. You can tell everybody was awkward. Yes. Talking about the biggest drug lord in the, war, in the yes. world. Yes. Then Brian Cranston <clears throat> does the complete opposite. Talking about Trump's America, make, make America great again slogan is racist. A Democrat, Marianne Williamson, a close friend of Adams, yep. is going against Biden. I'm sure you got some thoughts on that. DeSantis says ex-Disney uh, CEO complained of pressure over school bills, and he signs a bill placing Disney's district under state control. couple articles, Tom's got commentary on home prices will sink in these cities that were once red hot as supply starts to overwhelm demand. And another article that says, is now a good time to... Sell your house. Deion Sanders uh, said a couple of things about recruiting quarterbacks versus defensive ends, which uh, some people laughed about it. Some people said, well, that may be a little bit crazy. And Don Tom Brady may go into comedy, by the way. But before we get into it, let me give a quick shout out to our sponsor, uh, Aura. This is very important for you to be listening to this part. Guys, if you haven't already taken advantage of these guys and what they do, it is real. It is happening. A uh, uh, cyber theft today where people are going after in the cyber crime today where people are going after credit cards. You saw the other day where how people are going into phones, starting to mm. sell things. You're starting to see people using your social, and all of a sudden you got three credit cards. They're sending it to your house saying, hey, I didn't apply for these credit cards. If you're not protecting yourself, for somebody that's been in insurance for 23 years now, 22 years now, I'm all about protecting and being preventative. This is one smart, simple way to stay safe online, Cybercrime is ahead of uh, now uh, robberies. So if you want to take advantage of that, contact Aura. Today's uh, uh, podcast uh, is sponsored. One of the sponsors today is Aura. Uh, uh, protect yourself and your family from America's fastest growing crime. Try Aura free for two weeks and see if any of your or family's personal information has been compromised. You can actually see how many of your passwords are used on the dark web. A couple of our guys tested. If you've not done it, go ahead and do it. Start your 14-day trial at Aura.com forward slash PBD. Once again, Aura, 
patreon.com forward slash PBD. Rob, put that link in chat and description for people to find it. Having said that, let's get right into home prices will sink in these cities that were once red hot as supply starts to overwhelm demand. So let's take a look at these cities. And then, Tom, I think you got a couple thoughts about what's going on with real estate. And he said there's a couple things that came out this morning. Goldman Sachs predicts that home prices will sink 19% in Austin, 12% in Seattle, 16 in Phoenix, 15 in San Francisco by late 2024 compared to late 2022 levels. While the housing market overall remains tight, those four cities have seen big increases in inventory and supplies overwhelming demand. Goldman sees a 6.1% decline in home prices nationwide for 2023 as mortgage rates head back to 6.5% which could be attributed to Federal Reserve's aggressive rate hiking cycle. Housing affordability is currently at historic lows, and median existing home prices for all housing types in January was 359, which is 1.3% increase from the same month in 2022. Sales of existing homes have dropped 12 straight months, and buyers are starting to gain more purchasing power and potentially benefit from lower home prices. Tom? Well, what we're getting is what's called a rollback. And a rollback is when maybe something spikes up and then it rolls back immediately because the maybe the spike wasn't uh, what it should be. All those cities, Austin, Seattle, Phoenix, and San Francisco, had real big spikes between July of 21 and the end of 22. And so now that's kind of coming back down a little bit. And those people right now are panicking because, you know, a realtor knocks on your door and says, hello, sir. Yeah, you know, your home was worth uh, four fifty a year ago. Now your home's worth seven. They're looking at that and they're like, I should harvest this profit. And so they're putting them on the market, but they're putting them on the market at a time where the prices are shifting. And so with so much on the market, if you can stomach the interest rates, like six and a half right now, those markets are a good place to start uh, looking around to buy. Uh, I know that doesn't help you, Vinny, here in South Florida. We were talking about you looking for a condo. Mm -hmm. South Florida, not the place to be doing that right now. It hasn't shifted that much. But Pat, what we're seeing is a rollback in the super spike. Mm -hmm. And now there's so much on the market. Buyers have choices. So buyers with good credit, they can get that and stomach a 6%, 6.5% mortgage, have an opportunity here. And by the way, if the rates go down in a year and you refi at 3.75 or 4, but um, that's what we're seeing in these markets. It's not the same in the rest of the United States. Mm-hmm. So is this a good time to buy or sell? Well, if you're in a market where the rollback's coming back and there's some, you know, <clears throat> some opportunities there, and I would compare the price that you're looking at on the rollback to January, February, March, Q1 of 21. Compare it. If it's coming back there, now you're coming back in reality. Yeah. And so I would say make sure you make it. It's not just that the price is dropping from where it was yesterday. It's where the price was dropping from where it was at the beginning of 21. And, and uh, Tom, so those places, you said San Francisco, I mean, Austin, it's, you know, it's growing. But like Seattle and San Francisco, why, are, why is all this inventory coming out? People just leaving because the, the People are trying to harvest. Sucks. What I read this morning um, and uh, went to Nerd Wallet. They have a really great writer there who is very moderated and steady in his analysis. And they were pointing out that these were the areas that had super spikes. And the, the tenor from um, sellers is, hey, prices are starting to go down. You know what? I want to harvest the equity that I got in here. I want to harvest the profit and then um, go figure something out. Well, let me let me read this article and I'm going to go yeah. to you. So is now a good time to sell your home, WSJ? I'm going to put these two stories together. In today's housing market, it's important for sellers to price their homes appropriately as buyers are more price sensitive due to high mortgage rates and overpricing could lead to fewer offers. Sellers in middle and lower priced segments of the housing market are far, uh, faring better while those in a higher price market are experiencing price drops Uh, According to Rob Barber, CEO of Adam Data Solutions, it is also essential to avoid overpricing, which can backfire as buyers are often working with smaller budgets and don't want to uh, spend time negotiating with a seller. Interesting. Uh, Overpricing could backfire on the seller. Lastly, sellers may want to wait until later in the selling season to list their homes as the five days in which sellers receive the best premium over their asking price were during the third and fourth weeks of May. Interesting. So the best time to sell your house is third or fourth week of May. Mm -hmm. May 23rd was found to be the most profitable date with a 18.3% premium above market price. May 23rd. Uh, Adam, thoughts? 
Well, I'm, I was chuckling a little bit because both of you guys, before even Vinny asked, they were like, no, Vinny, now is not the time to buy right now. Because yeah. okay. Vinny, every episode, there's, like, a, there's please so, so, so is now the time? Yeah, yeah in South so, Florida. In South well, Florida. Exactly. Florida. Well, here's how I'm processing all this real estate wild swings. It's the same thing that we've seen with everything we've seen with the U.S. savings rates and with credit card debt. Since, since basically COVID started... We've seen these wild swings in how much money people are saving and now how much debt they have, these stimulus checks, the printing of the money. The, at the end of the day, even with inflation rates and interest rates, COVID, lockdowns, everything, we're still you know, on our path to this return to normalcy, right? So that, that's, I think, what's happening here. Now, specifically those cities, we've all seen what's happened in the stock market and NASDAQ over the last 12 months. They've been deflated. So you're talking Seattle, you're talking San Francisco, you're talking Austin, very tech-heavy cities. Meanwhile, you have cities that are big in lifestyle, like South Florida, Miami, Boca, West Palm, Fort Lauderdale. They're increasing. So ultimately, what does this come down to? It's supply and demand, basic rule of economics. So I, too, would look into a place in South Florida relatively soon, if possible, but I don't think that's on the horizon right now. Oh, great. Yeah, I, I, I have to tell you, like, <laughs> if there is a market where <clears throat> there will be desperate sellers. That's what I was going to ask you. No, there will be desperate sellers because people have a ten. History has proven, based on a lot of studies done on 113 billion people that have lived, people have a tendency of making bad decisions. Really? And when they make bad decisions, <laughs> they become desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you this this is I, proven, by the way, yeah, by many no, yeah. scientists yeah, on yeah. both sides. Yeah. Uh, so. So meaning when bad decisions are made, things go for sale, which means there's a lot of things that's going to be on sale, whether it's in a great market, bad market, terrible market, but some markets are going to get hit harder than others. There's no question about that. I'll start asking also, less questions, not to cut you off, Tom. Just you three, please, just when that day comes, just because I'm not asking no <laughs> Only more. if you promise to stop asking the same got, question I'm, every I'll podcast. tell everybody that's watching, I will never ask again. Just when, I, just one day when it is right, walk in and go, Vinny, You'll know, Vinny. now. You'll Vinny. Okay. That's it, because so my mom is, I have to move Handshake we'll, agreement. We'll, we'll probably be six months too late, because no one can predict that. Yeah, but okay. what, you, what you just need to know is, <clears throat> it's a hit and miss. You know, you, you the other, yesterday I got interviewed by a guy. He calls me and says, yeah, so we'd like to interview you, because we saw that you uh, uh, sold your Wayne Gretzky card for a record-breaking number, the two PSA 10s for $2.2 million. So I'm like, okay, I, this guy's calling from Canada. It's a big paper. They're interviewing. I want to go to this year's Nationals. <clears throat> The big uh, card convention that they do, where I got I don't know a couple hundred thousand people go to it. So, so how does it feel when you bought this card for five hundred forty thousand dollars and you sold it for two point two million? I felt it felt great. I said, but it didn't feel good six months later when one of my cards sold for three point seven five billion. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! What's it on the market Did for you now? What you said? Yeah. But that's going to be a $20 million card in the next 10, 20 years. Jeez. Okay, it's gonna, th th That card, you, you, you're not going to get your hands on that card. You may never see that card for the rest of your life ever again. It's not a unique card. Here's the point. To time everything, you're, you you're have to be very lucky to time, and there's mm -hmm. people that are going to time it and get lucky with it. Uh, you want to make the right decision based on what's going on. Right now, to me, in my opinion, there's still a lot of uncertainties. There's uncertainties with investigations. There's uncertainties with interest rates. There's uncertainties with war. There's uncertainties with debt. There's uncertainties with leaders at the White House. There's uncertainties with election. There's a lot of different uncertainties. This is a good season to look for some opportunities. I think when un unemployment, if unemployment to me hits the 5%, uh, if there's a marker I would use to buy and make aggressive offers would be if unemployment gets to 5%. That would be my marker. So forget about what I'm saying. Forget about what anybody else is saying. If unemployment's hitting 5%, that is a good time for you to say, I think this is a good time for me to go and make some offers because there's probably going to be some desperate sellers that he here's just what happens to life. And it's a very ugly part of life. I was a kid. My parents went through a divorce. When divorces happen, one of the two is going to say, I don't care what you do. Sell the house. I want my equity out of the house. Mm -hmm. So one has to sell. Yeah. It's like, but wait, babe, if we sell today, why are you being so dumb and greedy? Did you call me dumb? I'm going to call the lawyers. Right. Sell the house right now. It's worth 1.2 million. If we wait for six months, we can get 1.2. I don't care. Sell it today. You sell it for 950. Sure. Well, the buyer made 250. Yeah. I don't know if you understand what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, so I the buyer it. made 250. Divorces are about to go up. If unemployment goes up, these things, these life wow. things are going to happen. It's just, 
It's what's going to happen when people get fired. Life is hard. Mm -hmm. Finances are hard. Meeting your expenses is difficult. And the first thing that takes the biggest hit is what? Marriage. When marriage takes a hit, people make bad decisions financially. Mm -hmm. Most people are not ready financially. Most people are not ready to get married financially, let alone when they get married and a big crisis takes place. Then they make some desperate decisions, which is selling things that they should probably be sitting on. Mm -hmm. They sell it for pennies on a dollar. Go ahead, Adam. Let me ask you, I, I fully agree that the hardest thing to do is time the market. You know, they say that the one thing you need to know about investing is not timing the market, it's time in the market. We've all heard this before. Um, I've, I've learned this in real estate. You know I'm more of a real estate guy. I'm sorry, I've learned this in the stock market and more stock market than a real estate guy. But what do you think is harder to time? I, wouldn't, it, it would be probably more appropriate to say it's harder to time the stock market because there's less... Uh, there's more things going on that 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 you kind of got to be uh, pay attention to, versus in the real estate market, it's interest rates, right? Uh, the job markets, and um, obviously dealing with people's equities in their homes. But uh, as far as timing goes, because right, right now is that's a, time. a very good question you're asking. I think it's a lot easier to time real estate than it is to time stock market. Yep. You're 100 percent right. Mm -hmm. Last week was a weird day in the stock market. You guys see the stock market every day, bam, 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 yeah, bam. Like, what the hell is going on? Right, bam, bam. Walmart, Target. Oh, it's because of this. Oh, it's because of interest rate. Oh, it's because of that. But you know, real estate, you know, it's not a as faster of a process. I want to go into car sales to show you something, but before I do, Tom, I'm going to give you the last word on uh, real estate before we move to the next topic. Uh, I. I was just going to say unemployment rate, Seattle's unemployment rate is almost 4%. It'd been hovering around 3.2 to 3.4, but we we heard about layoffs at who? Microsoft, Amazon. So mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of tech layoffs. Tech so, you, so you've got the Seattle going on. And to, to Pat's point, you know, the unemployment rate may not be a national figure you're looking at. It may be a local figure. That's a very good point. Mm -hmm. and That's a so, very good point. So what you see here, Seattle is flagged. They were at 3.4, 3.5 the yep. end of the year. And with the things up there, the one thing that I read is that the next next announcement is probably going to be 4%, 4.1 in Seattle. And what Pat just said is, Keep your eyes out when it hits 5% in your market. And if you're in a steady industry, you've got something else going, you have an opportunity. Rob, pull up what I just sent you right there. Tom, you just made me uh, Google unemployment rates by state. You'd be amazed who's the gonna, highest. Before you show that. it, before yeah. you show it, don't show it. Don't show it. I don't even want them to see it. What state do you think has the highest unemployment right now? What state has the lowest? Highest. highest. Unemployment? I just texted you the link. Which one has the highest? Very interesting because this is where I was going because the national unemployment rate is what, 3.5%? 3, 3, right 3, 4, now? 3, 5 right now. Okay. What cool. do you think is the highest? The highest. I don't think you're going to get it as your first. Just take one guess. You're not going to get it. I wouldn't have guessed it. I'm going to guess Los West Virginia. Los Angeles is not, you're saying California. Yeah, so it's not Los California. Los Angeles, the, the, the lovely state of Los Angeles. I the, love that. What lovely state would LA. you say? <laughs> what state would you say? I'm saying an obscure state that, that has lost a lot of manufacturing jobs. It is a big city. No, it is a big state. City or state? It's a big state. Oh, I guess West Virginia already. Okay, what I'll were you going to say? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Texas. Okay, go for it. Click on it. Zoom in. It's Nevada. Nevada? Oh, damn. Nevada's 5%. Go up. No, no, go up in the bottom. No, no, the other way, the other way. Yeah, right there. Zoom in right there. Wow. Nevada's 5 at 5.2%, guys. D.C.'s 4.7%, Illinois 47 Oregon 45 Delaware 44 mm. And by the way, go up to Washington. Up it's, to the by the way, is Delaware map? that one guy, if you can go back there the other way. There you go. Is Delaware that one place where that guy lost his job who got a hold of that laptop? He like, he got, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Delaware, right? Yep. That's probably affecting that. But keep yeah. going but down. But it has to, risen laptop but his, repair but his dad, <laughs> Look right, at but this. His, his dad's taking care of him. He knows Utah's the lowest. Dakotas are the next. Then it's Florida. Huh. Yeah, let's go, gets baby. Gets a round of applause. Let's go. Let's go. It gets yeah. a round of applause. By the way, this is the kind of stuff that Governor Ron DeSantis can use when That's he's it. running. Yes. To say out of the, we are the number four lowest unemployment rate in America. Say something. Yeah. Say lowest something. in America. Interesting to see so this data. What, how are you processing Nevada almost double where Utah is? It's entertainment. Yeah, and think though. about the population yeah. too. I mean, it's North Dakota, South Dakota, and Utah. I mean, probably my sister was stationed, and there's a bunch of military bases there. I'm wondering if that, because, you know, if there's a base. I, I will tell you this about Nevada, though. Like, we just signed, uh, we're doing our next MGM event in August, right? And we get the whole MGM Grand Arena. Here's what happened. We just we are right now negotiating for the next couple years, two or three years to sign with them. And by the way, they're booked for four years. Did you hear what I said? MGM Grand Arena Convention Center is booked for four years. That's insane. Yep. So meaning I I convention business is back. 
So it's interesting. You're saying why is Nevada's un? Can you Google why is Nevada's unemployment rate the highest? Why is Nevada's unemployment rate the highest? What would it be? Is and so, Pat, they do an event like some MGM does an event every weekend. Oh, is yeah. that what they're doing? Oh, so oh, they're yeah. booked for God. That's insane. Why? Why is yeah. Nevada's Nevada's unemployment rate jumps four point nine? The states uh, also saw the large thing. Las Vegas' housing, housing market has cooled amid rising hydro. Okay, so what does that yep, have to do with unemployment? True. Zoom in. Nevada's unemployment rate four point nine. The state also has the largest increase from October point thirty percent, along with Oregon Department of Labor. God, Nevada's economy is still recovering from a step downturn and massive job losses during the first. Ever pandemic, the key hotel and entertainment industry in Las Vegas has bounced back as gamblers are already returning. Okay, great. But the city's real estate market is as cool, along with other hot spots, amid a sharp increase in interest rates. Property managers in Las Vegas are seeing more available rentals. I have a, I have a theory as as you're reading this because you oh, talked boy. about the convention. Wait, wait, let's go to the chart. Keep going Pat, down. Let's go to the chart. Okay, they're just recovering, is what yeah. it is. Well, so it's not it. up to four nine. They were at it's 30%. actually down to four nine. Yeah. Yeah. they're at the, so they're like we're right. happy to be at the number oh, we are course. today. Well, I, I think that as you're telling me about the convention business, uh, there's a difference between like corporations and people, just the average working person. Corporations, big events, everything that we do, Nalba, all massive events, that they're doing okay. They're back to business. That's business as normal. But the average person out there isn't exactly balling out in Vegas these days with inflation and interest rates right now. So they're a little bit more struggling versus what all the free money was being printed. That's how I'm processing these and, numbers. And uh, for people at home, Nalba is? Yeah, it's a great conference. Nalba is, a, you know, for them, the Nalba is an insurance conference. Nalba is like, uh, one of the bigger, like, real estate does their biggest conferences. This is one of insurance's biggest conferences that they do. But, mm -hmm. again, so this isn't really the fact that Nevada is taking a hit. Nevada is just getting back into the convention business. All I'm saying to you is study that 5% unemployment number. That's the number I would be looking at in my market to look at whether it's time to buy a house or not. Rob, do we go to the next sponsor or do we do the car first? I say we do cars because it has to be in the first six minutes, 30 minutes, right? Or is it 25 minutes? First 30, but we're okay. at 924. So. I'm just going to do it right now for the okay. sake of it. So watch this. You guys heard me earlier when I talked about that c uh, collectible card, uh, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky card that we bought for 540 and sold it for $2.2 I'll never forget. It's, 11 th it's midnight. Jen's laying next to me, and I said, babe, she says, babe, I'm sleeping. I said, babe, do you remember that, those cards I bought for 540 She says, yeah, what about it? I said, I just sold it for $2.2 2 And she says, what did you just say? I said, $2.2 2 In 18 months. Wow. From 540 to $2.2 2 million. That same card six months later sold for $3.75 million. Do you know why? Because cards and art, people didn't trust cards and art. It's been said that art, 80% of it has been what? Fraud. Has been fraud. And card, there's been a lot of fraud because it would cut the sides and all this stuff. What change collectible cards as well as art is companies like Masterworks, like PSA. Masterworks, who we decided to team up with to make our sponsors, has become an alternative investment for people to consider. When you look at art, I can give you a lot of different data when it comes down to art. Goldman Sachs and BlackRock say the days of uh, there's no alternative investment are over. Uh, RIA reports 88% of surveyed advisors intend to increase allocations to alternatives over the next two years with over half, which is 53%, raising allocations all the way to 15% of your allocations going in alternative investments. So if you may be watching this and saying, Pat, I, I can't afford a Banksy. I can't afford a Picasso. I don't know if they're right or wrong. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. What Masterworks does is they go do all the verification. They deal directly with the SEC. Every single thing you buy with them, it's qualified with the SEC and it's broken into shares. So if a Banksy piece is $2 million and you can't afford to buy it for $2 million, but you can invest $20,000, you can own a share of Banksy oh, art wow. now or a piece of Pablo Picasso art now. And we see the numbers when you see what's going on with art. So Masterworks' last three exits have delivered 17, 21, and 33% of net returns. Net returns. So having said that, they have nearly 600,000 members, and paintings have sold out in minutes. But you can get priority access to be part of a Masterworks as long as you're mm -hmm. part of Valuetainment. It's by invitation only. There's going to be a link below if you do want to participate in art as an alternative investment, you may want to look into Masterworks. Rob, let's make sure to put their links below for them to request an invitation to be part of the other 600,000 members. So having said that, let's go into cars. I want to talk about cars here. I saw some data this morning, and it was really interesting, okay? Folks, if I can tell you to subscribe to anything today, 
Go subscribe to Wall Street Journal. We don't make money off of it. Go subscribe to what they're saying with their tweet, their uh, newspaper. I still get newspaper. I go to this restaurant. This lady told me, I can't see the Think about the last time I saw a man reading a newspaper. And I think she was trying to say, I'm getting older yeah. because I like newspapers. Exactly what you were saying. Subscribe to their articles. Subscribe to their newspapers. The content they're making right now is so center, which is what we need. They're not Fox. They'll call out Trump. They'll call out DeSantis. They're not CNN. They'll call out Biden. They'll call out the administration. They're who you want to talk to. They're doing a phenomenal job today, uh, Wall Street journalists. So I saw this video. If you can pull up this video, by the way, that I sent you. And on Wall Street Journal, this video shows a guy who owns a dealership, what it looked like just a few months ago versus today. Watch how he describes this. Turn on. There you go. Go ahead. If you turn around and you look, everything you see is new. That's 10 rows, each with about 15 cars. That's probably 150, 175 cars. It's what you'd expect to see at a car dealership like Adam Lee's. But let's rewind eight months. Look at this. I oh haven't walked out here in a while. This is... They don't have any cars. A lot of wow. Last year, new car sales fell to their lowest level in over a decade, as shoppers saw more asphalt than cars on dealer lots. There is no cars now, to sell a year ago. Now, fast forward to today. Dealers like Adam Lee finally have more cars to sell, but rising interest rates are making those cars harder to afford. Okay, you can so, pause it right here. So there's a couple of things when I saw this video and a couple charts uh, 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 that I wanted to share with you. So first of all, we all know a year ago, I'm trying to buy a car for my family, for my, you can't get a car. You can't get chips. The prices are ridiculous. Then you see some of these numbers. Go to the next chart that they're showing based on auto sales. Okay, so this is inventory, okay, inventory. For about two years, America, for the first time ever, we're talking to since decades, our inventory was less than a million. Prior to COVID, look at 2020. If you look at 2020, you see that number 3 million? Yeah, almost 3 million. Prior to 2020, the, a, a, American dealerships, dealerships in America for decades were always above 3 million. We always had 3 million cars in inventory for decades. It dropped to less than a million. You see that number right there, 788, which was July of 2022. It's come up to 1.172 million. It still hasn't come up. We got a lot of room to come up to, uh, what do you call it, the average of 3 million plus. Can you go to the next chart, which was kind of interesting to think about? This is the number of day supplies automakers have. Jeep has enough supply for 125 days. Jeep. Can you zoom in a little closely to see who's second, third, if we can see it? Okay, number two, is, is that Buick? Buick. Buick, Volvo, Chrysler. Well, Buick Dodge. should have enough yeah. supply for years. Uh, <laughs> Volvo, Chrysler, Dodge, Jaguar, Ram, Infiniti. Okay, go to the bottom now. Go to the bottom. All the way at the bottom is Toyota. Can you go to the next slide so we know what Toyota's days are? So that's 152. Toyota only has 27.7 days of supply. Wow. Which means Toyota, Kia, Honda, Lexus is selling. Even Land Rover. Hmm. BMW is selling. So Porsche is selling. That's yeah. a, a Mercedes is selling. Facet and Buick. So go to the next slide. Go to the next slide that we have here. Average new vehicle transaction price. Go three years ago. $32,000. The average car today, Vinny, is $47,000. Honestly, Tom... How the hell are people making these car payments? By the way, here's how I want you to look at this. This is the thought that was scary for me. Can you go do me a favor? Pull up a, a, a calculator. Just pull up a calculator, uh, 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 car auto payment calculator. Type in auto car payment calculator. I see where you're going. I'd also like to know how many months, the average number of months people are on those car loans. It used to be 60, five years. I'm wondering if they're going longer because the car's more expensive. Why don't we do this together? Let's just do this together. Go to auto loan calculator, zoom in a little bit, put $32,000 price, $32,000, stay on six months, go to, what were the rates uh, three years ago in 2019? 1%, 2%? What do you want to put it on? You, you could get three. Let's just use yeah. three. Average credit, 3%. Okay, put three percent down payment. Let's put zero. We're zero. putting zero down payment. Yeah. Okay, and then pick state. I don't know. Go to Florida. Let's just do Florida to Florida. Okay, uh, or matter of fact, go to California. Go yeah, to that's California. Where I came from. Go to California. Okay, go to California. Whatever is fine. Calculate. Calculate. What's the payment? Five seventy five. Where do you see it? Five seventy five is the payment. Okay, so that's what. That's at the average price of a car three years ago, which was thirty two k. 
Okay, and we're using three percent interest rate. Payment is five seventy five. No okay? money down. No money down. Which is no money down. Fine. Now go to take that take that thirty two thousand. Make it forty seven thousand. Leave the time. What do you want to put it at? Seven percent or six and a half? Let's, Let's just use six and a half. Go to six and a half. Everything stays the same. Calculate. Nine nineteen. Jesus Christ. So let me get this straight. It's like two Tom, cars. You went from five seventy five to nine nineteen. The income hasn't increased. No. Nope. Your income hasn't increased. What is the number on that five seventy five on nine nineteen? If we do the math, is that an increase of a uh, seventy uh, percent? Jesus. 919 minus 575, 345 divided by 575. That's 60% increase in car payments. In three years, Vinny. Oh, my God. In three years. We're not in four years. We're not talking about an increase. By the way, meanwhile, all those money that they spent to people, they've spent. Okay? So so when people are like, well, America's going to be fine. Real estate's going to be fine. Economy's going to be fine. Tr- really? The only way this is going to be fine is what's the average income in America in 2019? Pull up average income in America in 2019. What is the median income? Whatever you want to... Not household. Individual? Individual income okay. in 2019. Because individual income is probably closer to 40 grand. What, household, it, 68. Yeah. Fine. No problem. Let's use household. Go household income in 2019 at 68. What's household income today? What's household income in 2023? What does it show? 60. Wait, how much? 60. 74, 75. Okay, so let's do the math here. Here's why I want you to know problem is coming because the American family is going to feel this. So that's an increase of $7,000. $7,000. So their income has increased 10%, but the average car payment has increased 60%. You explain to me how American families are going to make up that 50% like this. There's only a couple things that happens. Layoffs. Or a big ass increases of fifty percent. Companies cannot pay fifty percent increase today. So what's going to happen next? Auto, 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 selling of cars. Prices of cars are going to go down. Okay, mm-hmm. you're going to see people who are trying to sell their homes. It, it's going to go down. This is bigger than people think. As much as we talk about home prices, what do you think people buy more of? Cars or homes? Cars. The first way to judge if people can afford to buy houses if they can uh. afford to buy what. A car. a car. Yeah, so if they can't afford to buy a car today, how in the hell are they going to buy a house today? <laughs> and then what is the seller going to do? Doesn't the seller need more qualified buyers? Mm-hmm. Guess what? Qualified buyers are decreasing. Qualified buyers are decreasing. So this is a very interesting season we're going to go into in the next 6, 12 months. If you own your car today, uh, uh, good for you. If you're about to go buy a car today, brace for impact. You're going to see it in the payments. If you haven't already, if you haven't already, Tom, you're doing some math there. So I'm curious to know what yes, you're thinking. I did. Average length of a car loan, 2019, 59.5 months, six years, Jeez. right? 60. Average length today, 69.7 months, almost 70. Ladies and gentlemen, 72 is one more year. So the, how is Americans dealing with it? If Rob could go back there and plug in 72 months, just plug in 72 on the 47. And I'm yep. all happy to Adam because Adam does not have a car. You know, this whole time. It's still. It's still. Adam it's still. Like this. Now Adam take a look. Like, yeah. It's still 790. Do me a favor. Matter of fact, let's play this game. Go to 84, which is seven years. Go to 84. Dude, that's- By the way, the longer you go, the higher they increase the rates. But it's fine. Go to 84. It's what? 697. Go to 96. Jesus. To get to the same payment. Go to 108. Oh, my God. We're going to play this game. Go to 108. What was the number? 575? 575. You're officially at it. Instead of 60 payments of 575 to afford today's car, you have to make an additional 48 payments. Yeah, but how much has the cost gone up? How much more interest are you paying? That's the number it that I want to know. It doesn't matter. The average family doesn't think about interest. They think what they can afford on a monthly payment. Yeah, but that's the exact opposite of what you should be thinking. It's not about what you should be, Adam. We're not sitting here talking about what people should be doing. The average family sitting there saying, I need a freaking SUV. I need something. I can only afford 575 They don't care about interest rates. When I bought my first Mitsubishi Eclipse when I was in the Army, you know what my interest rate was? F Mac, if you're listening, F U, 33%. Yeah. 33%? Well, F Mac out of Kentucky, Clarksville, if you're out there, I don't know if you're still in business. They gave this 18 year old kid a Mitsubishi Eclipse 33% of my interest rate. What? I paid it. 
Jesus. Frick it, it was a $5,300 loan, but I have to, it took me, you know, I'm still paying He's off still the cliff. still paying it yesterday was your last Parked payment. outside, I come to work <laughs> with it. That's right. One Wait. of the tires is missing. You know, we push it every morning when we come here. You can't say that people can't care about the interest rates. I didn't you tell know you, they care. I didn't tell you that, no, Adam, okay, you care. I care. Yes. We care. Yes. People care more about the payment than the interest rate. And that's why they're idiots. I that's why post, most people are living paycheck I, I to paycheck and they can't afford it. I didn't tell you whether they're idiots or not. They listen mm -hmm. to this content because they want to change. Yeah. They listen to sauce because they want to change. Mm -hmm. The people that are listening to you, they're saying, I agree with you. I want to learn from you. Yeah. But the average person today who is the majority is only looking at payment and guess how they're going to be financing. You know what, John? Can you by any chance make it 108 months? Can you by any chance make it yeah. 96? The salesperson doesn't say, Why do we well, <laughs> Mr. Jones, do you really realize how much more interest you're going to pay? The salesperson like, I don't care what we make it. Sell it so I can make my commission. Yeah. So that's the car salesman's well, going to be doing. We all know that the big money in cars, just as you're seeing this, Finance. is not on buying the car. Yeah. It's the financing. Oh, that's that's how they can go from making two, three, five grand to 20 grand off a of customer. <sighs> Because if a customer's like, I just want to be at a $400 payment, it's like, yeah, right, well, get years. ready to make those $400 payments for the Don't next 30 life. years, buddy. Yeah. Let me read a couple quick super Jeez. chats here. One is Scott Rodriguez. Who is, uh, Scott Rodriguez. By the way, I think by the end of March, starting April, we're only going to have members be able to comment. A lot of people are becoming members. If you haven't yet become a member, you may want to. Starting April, we will only be reading. Uh, members will only be able to see their comments. Everybody else, you won't be seen in April. But you got a month to become a member. Scott said, and I'm going to say this in the friendliest way, good morning, home team. The live show was amazing. By the way, we had a sick event last uh. week live. It was phenomenal. I had a great time. Tip take uh, takeaways from the live show. PBD is a stallion. I don't know what that means. BizDoc is an OG. Vinny is one handsome stud. And Adam definitely <laughs> looks his age. Which, by the way, oh, why is everybody always talking shit to Adam? <laughs> like, not even one good compliment. It's not cool, man. But, hey, Scott, Scott, I enjoy talking to you. You're an absolute stud of a guy. Jesse just comment, uh, gave a super chat. I've been selling... CDJR for six years now. Sales have a lot to do with your team, and the industry is filtering out the lame and average salesman that got in these last three years and didn't sharpen their skills and relationship. Jesse, I agree. The same is in many different industries. These are different times. Relationship matters a lot in industry today. So, Tom, before we go into the next story, any final thoughts on the cards, or can we go to the next one? No, guys? let's go to the next story. Right, I, think the next story. Uh, I think we've run that one. Adam, right. you look lab fantastic. leak. Lab leak. Oh, I know. Lab <laughs> Lab. <laughs> you okay. I, he He's looks so handsome. Thinking. But Scott's just trying. Listen, you can't it's say just, nice. Yeah. Adam, certain people yeah, yeah. become sexier as they age. Trust me, you're in that category. You got nothing to worry about. Guys, All right. When I tell you I'm not worried, Lab, I'm not worried. By the way, just so you guys know, he was worried. Cam I We texted the camera to go off his eye because he was crying. So yeah, it's, all, it's okay, Adam. It's, it's going to be all right. It up mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. very quick. So Thank you for the love. Lab leak. Lab leak, most like the origin of COVID-19 pandemic, Energy Department now says. This is a Wall Street Journal story. When this was said, people lost their minds. How dare you tell me Racist. I made the wrong decision following Fauci and science? How dare you do something like that? Well, the U.S. Energy Department has concluded with low confidence, low confidence. that the COVID pandemic most likely arose from a laboratory leak. The conclusion is the result <laughs> of new intelligence and is significant because the agency has considerable scientific expertise and oversees a network of U.S. national laboratories, some of which conduct advanced biological research. The FBI previously came to the conclusion that the pandemic was likely the result of a lab leak in 2021 with moderate confidence and it still holds this view. The Energy Department Department now joins the FBI in saying the virus likely spread via a mishap at a Chinese laboratory. China, which has placed limits on investigations by the World Health Organization, has disputed that the virus could have leaked from one of its labs and has suggested it emerged outside of China. <laughs> Do you, but do you, Vinny. do you hear what you're saying? The low confidence, moderate confidence. And I hate when people say stuff like, man, I hate to say I told you so. I don't. Like, I don't know if I'm a, I'm a psychic or... Or, or what's going on with me, Pat? I know, I'm pretty sure you're in the same camp. We were all right. We were right about the lab leak. We were right about natural immunity. We were right about the mask. We were right about lockdowns. We were right about the vaccines, the boosters, ivermectin, Dr. Fauci being a little rat, the who. Like, how, how am I just so right about all this? Like, do I have a crystal ball? <laughs> like, how do we know, but all these people 
didn't. And the fact that they're still coming up, was it, I think it was John Kirby yesterday, Pat. He comes out and he's like, because uh, somebody from, I'm shocked that they asked him, they're like, are, how do you guys feel about the gain of function research? Are you guys doing it? He said it's necessary for us to, now they're saying that yes, we, we do uh, gain of function, but we have to, to figure out this next step. And I sent Rob this link, Rob, on, on Slack. I'm worried, Pat, because Joe Biden said eight months ago, or I think almost a year ago, he goes, hey, guys, we need money for all this and all that because a second pandemic is coming. Joe Biden said that verbatim. And it scares me, Pat, because we had people like uh, Lee Ming, Dr. Yimin uh, uh, Young. She was on uh, Tucker Carlson last night. She worked for the Chinese uh, government, and she said this was – this is a doctor, Pat. This is not just a regular citizen. That I just had her on. I had her on two and a half years ago. Okay, so you know, and what did she say? Two years ago, she goes, "The government leaked this to destroy the economy." We of- got a strike for that, and they took it down within forty-eight hours. And, and Do you that- remember that virologist? Yep. We yeah. got a strike, and they took it down within forty-eight hours. And so, think, and so, and going to my next point. Yeah. Doesn't that scare? That should scare the, the average American that this all came out. China is so protected by our media, by our government, and I just it just goes to me to ask the question: By the NBA. why? What, Pat? Hold on, it's, uh, Tom. Why? Why is it because we owe them all this money? Is it because they they know certain things about it? Like, can you exp- uh, somebody m- make make it make sense to me? How? Why? You know, you know what you know what I think is needed, Tom. Do, do you know uh, that uh, movie, Aaron Brockovich? Is that the movie, Aaron Brockovich? Yeah, yeah. The, Julia Roberts. It's the story, I mean, obviously, Julia Roberts, but what is the story about? The story is about uh, chromium, which is a, there's a chromium chemical that was used to help lubricate pumps at water uh, treatment and water pumps that was in um, in desert community in California. That chromium at a certain percentage, caused tremendous cancers and sterility as, and uterine problems in the people. And Aaron Brockovich and another attorney went out there and discovered that they had covered up the spills and the disposal of the chromium. Yeah. And so Aaron Brockovich brought it to light. And, and who was Aaron Brockovich? Aaron Brockovich was basically a paralegal that had the guts to go out and do the research, and she partnered with a law firm. And you can read the true story of her, uh, well covered by the L.A. Times. I don't usually give them credit, but they've written a lot of stories about the real Aaron Brockovich and the real story. And she was a whistleblower. So here's what she ended it, up doing, right? She went up against the most powerful people, a case against Pacific Gas and Electric Company. Which is right? basically a government entity exactly. in California. And, and involving groundwater contamination in Hinkley, California. And did she end up winning? Did she end up exposing them? Did lobbyists lose their minds? Did they have to settle for $333 million, the largest settlement ever paid in a direct action lawsuit in the United States history to that date? Yes, she did that. You know what's needed today? What's needed today is one of these relentless lawyers who is not going to give up until they get to the bottom of it. I don't want to say the following line that many of us have said, including myself. You think they're ever going to be held accountable? No, they're not. Da, 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 da. I don't want to say that. I'm convinced somebody lost a relative, a family, based on the decision that was made, is going to spend and dedicate the rest of their lives to proving all the stupid things that they did, force, manipulate, and that person's going to dedicate their lives to it until we find out about it. I think the, the market today, just think about this was a niche market in California. We're not talking about a huge, yeah. We're talking about, and this ended up becoming a national thing, right? We're talking COVID that came from China, that the president said the China virus, and the lady says, you can't call it China virus. Right. Why do you call it China virus? And he said, because it came from China. China. The flu called the Spanish flu. flu. It's not offensive when they say the Spanish flu because that's where it came from. So moving forward, everybody has to start calling it the China virus. This is it. Somebody, I believe, that's a mm-hmm. true believer is going to go investigate this, and then all of a sudden they're going to say, holy shit. Yeah. If a true believer, if the true believers rise up and go out there and do this, it's going to be a scary sight for a lot of people. Yeah, I feel like we're living in reality programming, and this is a Netflix special called COVID Confessions, and we're in the middle of season one, episode six. <laughs> Masks <laughs> don't really work. The The virus did come from a lab in China. You know, the 
vaccine will not prevent you from getting it. The vaccine has side effects. My goodness, I just feel like we're in COVID confessions, season one, episode six, and it just keeps going. But it really makes me nervous about because we know why do we get flu shots back in the day each year? Because the flu runs around the globe. The normal annual flu runs around the globe um, and because you have winter in the southern hemisphere, winter in the northern hemisphere, starts Australia, comes up to us. They know what the strains are going to be and you go in and get your simple little $15 flu shot. These things, influenza and flu-like um, viruses, and I'm not an epidemiologist or anything, but the next version of it, you know, is usually tougher and so I just this part of it makes me nervous, but the front part of it makes me disgusted because I think we every week there's some sort of a discussion. Can you pull out what I just sent you, by the way? Can yeah, you pull out what I just sent yeah. you? I think this highlights exactly what we stand for here is the concept of open discussion and debate. Mm -hmm. So for years, if you had an opinion, mm -hmm. nobody knew for sure. Yeah. Like, I, sure. Yeah. Like, I agree. No matter what you say. You didn't know for sure. You had an opinion, but you're entitled to your opinion. The problem is what happened with big tech and collusion with the government is that they shut down opinions. They shut down discourse. You, you were shadow banned. You were flagged. You were censored. You were striked. Um, you were potentially canceled for expressing an, an opinion. Okay, and, I, and I'm highlighting that opinion here. I love that. And that is exactly what we stand for here is like you tried to set up a debate with two different types of doctors and one wouldn't come on, pretty prominent doctor, because he didn't want to go against the narrative of the uh, basically the bat versus yeah. the lab situation. Yeah. Yeah. One was Which, Dr. Mike, yeah. who's a famous YouTuber. The other one was Dr. Paul Offit. Dr. Mike agreed to come three times. He said yes, yes, yes. Then he said he's busy, and then he made it 50 other videos two weeks later, and as busy as he was, he was not busy. He was frightened. Yes. He was afraid is what he was. And every other week, Fauci would be on his YouTube channel. So God forbid if he was disloyal to Fauci and the CDC. Dr. Mike is not somebody who uh, uh, was willing to sit down and have a real educated debate with another qualified doctor. With a nice resume of Stanford, Harvard, educated, no, because anybody that disagreed with uh, uh, Fauci was not really, they really didn't trust science. That's yeah. what You've they were. You've given a platform to a lot of people uh, on those things, including Robert Kennedy. I mean, so the invitation's been open to come... Uh, have PBD moderate, you know, productive debate between people. And you've you've spoken, you've had interviews with Robert Kennedy and others. Yeah. But what, and, well, here's my question too about what, why? I, and I'm going to keep saying why. Why is the government so low moderate? They don't want to point at at China. And why does the government, the government and Fauci still have that stance? They got skin in the game. That lab, we were sending money. Our government with Fauci, right, with the Eco Health Alliance, I guess, to do gain of function, and it leaked. They have skin in the game. They have to be like, well, we kind of. It's not. It's not going to be a definite point, but we're not stupid. We get it. You know what I mean? But it, like, like you said, Pat, it's going to take one person, hope to God, to be like, okay, listen, enough is enough. Point the finger. Still to this day, you mean three years later, I can't say it came from China. What? Well, uh, do they own us that much that I can't yeah. say it out loud well, I think without being racist or conspiracy theorists? Because on the way here, Pat, I watched like eight videos of just MSNBC and everybody going, Trump, what a, what a, raci what a racist, divisive. And if, if we let him say China and call it the China virus, I don't give a shit. Maybe we'd be, you know, we'd be closer to finding out, hey, who leaked it? Who's the person? That lab doesn't have hundreds of thousands of people. How many of you people were in there? Which one of you did it and why? Who the hell are you? Do you mm -hmm. have ties to anybody? If we don't get to that that point, it's going to happen again, just like Joe Biden said it's going to happen again. And, and Rob at one point could play that video. The president of the United States said eight months ago, another pandemic is coming. Can you play? Pat, this is, this is Joe Biden eight months ago saying he needs more money. And this is what he said about another pandemic. Watch. We do need more money, but we don't just need more money for vaccines for children eventually. We need more money to plan for the second pandemic. There's going to be another pandemic. We have to think ahead. What? And that's not something is he a last psychic? Did how, do you, well. how do you know that's a second pandemic is coming? Fairly well. that's why you we can stop it, Rob. How does he know? How do well, you know? I, I don't, I mean, because we've had 
Ebola and SARS, the, yeah, these things occur. So it's not. I'm not. They're not back to back. I'm not going to go years. conspiracy theory not, that he's planning the next pandemic. No, no, I didn't say he's planning it. I'm but, saying how does he know? Hold on, don't. I hate when you do this conspiracy shit. It ain't a conspiracy. He pandemics don't happen every year, Adam. They happen in ten years, in twenty. When's the last pandemic? Was well, it the global 2001? pandemic? Global. A hundred years ago. But, but if you're talking about SARS and Ebola, ten years, two thousand one. 2001 had, Obama, but how does how do you how can you say what's what, your point? My my point is he's there. If we don't get to the root of it and say okay, this is what happened because we're scared about offending a country that I don't give a shit about. Who gives a shit? All right, well then now, now I agree with you. Okay, if, if you want to get to the point, let's get to the point. Thank you. The point is this. Yes. China needs to be held accountable. Period. Okay. Seven, that, seven like, million dead. That's where I'm going with this. Okay. I'm not going to. Yeah, I got you. To you know all different sorts of places. So the problem with China, Pat hit the nail on the head with the Aaron Brockovich thing. China has denied, denied, denied. They've cover up. They've been uh, not not cooperating with any of the organizations. They're not letting people in there to 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 basically find out exactly what happened here. And in any unsolved mystery, you want to know what the hell happened, who did it, what's the reason why. Now, intelligence eighties. Uh, agencies, committees have, with confidence, have basically said that it is that is a lab mishap, not a act of aggression or a bio weapon purposely put out there. But why would China want to basically promote more of the bat theory than the lab theory? Because if it is the lab theory, they are 100% accountable because that's a government agency within China, part of the government. If it is the bat theory... Bats fucking fly. It could have come from anywhere, Mongolia, Korea, whatever. One of those things. You're one of those things that happened to be here. Some hungry Chinese guys saw the bat that flew in, yeah. took a bite out of its head in a wet market. It, it's it easier to kind of maneuver your way out of that. So that's China's premise. But at the end of the day, I'm not going wild conspiratorial thing here. What I do want to find out, much like you, is... What exactly happened with China and get some answers? Yeah. Because the end of the day, and then here's the biggest thing is how much money was printed? How many lives were lost? How many potential lawsuits, global lawsuits, could be held liable against China? China. Yeah, and you'll mind you, seven million people died globally. And it wasn't uh, that whole story. They said it was a pangolin in this market. Let's a pangolin's a mammal. It's can, not a, even can, a... Tom, were you going to say something, or or can we? Okay, let's, let, let's go to this next thing here. If you can do me a favor, so Woody Harrison, okay, Woody Harrelson, who was the actor from a lot of different movies, he was uh, in White Man Can Jump. I, I don't know True how many Detective, times I watched that movie. Show. True Detective, amazing show. He's just a great actor, man. He yeah. was uh, and a lot of different. He wasn't too. Anyways, play the clip on what he just said on SNL, and then. People's reaction. I'm gonna send you something to show how the entire media reacted to this. Go for it. Okay, so the movie goes like this: <laughs> the biggest drug cartels in the world get together and buy up all the media and all the politicians and force all the people in the world to stay locked in their homes. And people can only come out if they take the cartels' drugs and keep taking them over and over. Wow. I threw the script away. I mean, who is going to believe that crazy idea? Hey, so the moment goes like Pause it. Now, do me a favor. Show, show what I just texted to you and show how the market reacted immediately what? after that SNL went live. You have to see what these guys said. If you can put this up, I'll give you just three stories. If you can okay. just pull these things up. You know, oh, he, he's, he's out of his mind. He has no clue what he's talking about. Go ahead and make Why? that bigger. Check this out. <laughs> Uh, 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 let's see if we can open it up. Boom. Beautiful. Check this out. Woody Harrison, uh, Saturday Night Live monologue makes COVID conspiracy jokes. Variety. So Rolling Stone, Woody Harrelson spreads anti-vax conspiracy during SNL monologue. Huff Poe, Woody Harrelson rambles about weed and anti-vax conspiracy in SNL. Hmm. Can you imagine? This is a guy that is in Hollywood. He's a product of your industry, which, by the way, when I saw him talk about what he said here, do you remember Woody Harrelson in the movie 2012 where he was a conspiracy theorist on the top of the mountain saying the end of the world is coming? Yeah. Do you guys remember that whole of thing? Of course. That's the first thing I thought about. I'm like, dude, this guy, if, if, if the media really wanted to do a good job taking a shot at him, they would play a clip and saying he hasn't left this movie yet. He's still a conspiracy <laughs> theorist from the movie, but they didn't do that, but they missed the mark. Anyways, when you saw something like this about Woody, what's the first thing you thought well, about? First, first, Pat, hilarious. 
ballsy because think about it. You're in one of the most liberal cities on the one of the most biased, left-leaning shows. I wanted to ask you guys, and Adam, maybe you could even ask Marcelo. Do they have to approve your monologue? He's reading it off a teleprompter. The fact, I mean, the fact that they're always, always left-leaning, good on them for going, you know what? The hell with it. Go do it. It might help with with mm -hmm. um, with viewership. But if you think about it, bro, I I commend people like that that take their platform to kind of poke fun to make like but make their point as well. And what what a perfect time, especially when all this lab leak crap is coming. This was last Saturday, Pat. This is the most recent one. I say good for him. I'm curious to see. I want to know what happened. Maybe somebody in his family or something happened with his life or how his career is going to be affected. There's now. another clip with him and Bill Maher. Maybe I'll find out one on Twitter. But go ahead, Adam. What do you think about when you see this? I'm just wondering if a retraction or apology is coming soon for Eddie Harrelson. <laughs> yeah. He might be like, I misspoke. This was, was a on different. Uh, uh, I was smoked was a lot of weed. weed. Yeah. But I think one thing we can all agree upon, I, I again, I'm not the conspiracy theory guy. What what I what I what I will say is I'm very comfortable calling out big pharma. Big because time. there's no money made in immunity. Like, there's no money to be made in let's just naturally immunize uh, and just go from there. How much? How many billions of dollars did they make from vaccines? So to me, calling out Big Pharma, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. At the same time, you know, not everything Big Pharma does is bad. Of you know, that's that, that would be sort of disingenuous. They, they do provide drugs that do save people's lives, cancer treatments, diabetes, the list goes on and on. But... There's, there's no doubt this kind of leads to a bigger question of whether, you know, healthcare should be nationalized or whether it should be um, basically a for-profit for organizations like this. But it's fully in the right, if we just establish anything, to have this conversation, to have this debate. If there's anything we've learned, shutting down one side's opinion is a road to nowhere, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's where censorship and communism sort of shows up, and that's not what America is. So hopefully, I'm not guaranteeing it, hopefully we have at least as a society are starting to learn our lesson that not shutting down opinions uh, is the way to go. <sighs> oh, my God. That was I think like it was a, a gutsy move. Diplomatic. It, it sounded like Adam's about to run for local city yeah. council you, or mayor or Congress or Senate. But no, go, no, ahead, no. go ahead, Adam. I mean, well, my mom, actually, before we go, my mom, my mom texted me this right now. Tell Adam I think he looks great. That Sanchez guy is crazy. And he's a nice guy after the show. I love you all. That's my mom. That's right. Beautiful Shout out, lady. mom. Go ahead, Hi, mom. mom. Thank you. No, I think, I think it was a really gutsy move. And whoever wrote that monologue is equally gutsy and whoever <laughs> greenlit it is also gutsy and they're, they're letting the blowback come to woody harrelson yeah uh, and unless you completely go off script uh saturday night live is produced well, and there's a producer and they do edgy things with monologues and they play off the uh personalities that are co can I say one more thing about so, snl do, do that because because tom if it is an SNL monologue, then then let's see what he said to Bill Maher, because this is mm -hmm. definitely not a monologue. So why don't you play this real quick? And then, Adam, I want to hear what you got to say. Yeah. I definitely want to hear that. Here's the CDC promoting that we have to do all of these things, right? I just, I don't like profiteering in war. Interesting. You know? <laughs> right? Think of the billions of dollars that have gone to Big Pharma. But I'm, I was getting back to my original point. The last people I would trust with my health is Big Pharma and big government, because neither one of those what? strike me as caring entities. Wow. You Spoken know? as the perfect redneck hippie. <laughs> well, really? yeah. If that message doesn't, I mean, it's all it's, about it's, profit. Exactly, they're all about profit. And both sides and it's know that. the profit they've made. I think they've done a lot of studies about vitamin D and how important it was when the people who had low levels, they were much more. Um, he's drinking pot. I love the shoes Woody's wearing. Yeah. Why, why not yeah. tell people that? Can't yeah. you make money selling vitamin D? Is it he's, that kind of? What's the well, worst that could but, happen? But that's just it, man. There was only one thing, you know. The, the ivermectin got made into a, you know, horse tranquilizer, uh, a horse, whatever it is. Which it what, is, but what, also what, used what, by what, humans. Uh, it's used by millions and millions, millions of humans. Uh, a high hydroxychloroquine got uh, made ridiculous, um, and there was only one thing that could work, and that's the vaccine, right? And so, ultimately, because of that, 
billions of dollars was made. Right. Here's the secret. Oh, well, you know the drinking on that show too. That's Woody loose. His shoes are off. He's playing with his feet, and he's just telling you how it is. And they're bro. definitely smoking some weed. One hundred percent. His manager called him afterwards, saying, "Woody, what, what? was that? <laughs> I just got a call. You were going to be on Transformers 28, <laughs> and you're done. <laughs> oh my God! Fast so go ahead. We were going to say yeah. something. Well, I was going to say something about SNL, just because what we've seen as of late is there. Again, there's this return to normalcy. COVID has made everyone go insane, and Donald Trump. Prior to that, has made a lot, a lot of people on the left lose their freaking mind. We're all familiar with Trump derangement syndrome. So, who played uh, Trump on SNL for all those years? Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Anything happened to Alec Baldwin as of late? Is he in the Nothing. news as of late lately? Yeah. Anyone get murdered by Alex Baldwin as of late? Yeah. So, if you see what's happening with Woody Harrelson, you're right. This was scripted. They knew this was happening. A month ago, you had Dave Chappelle. Say some wild ass shit. Mm -hmm. uh, what's happening is just like how CNN, who's their new uh, uh, CEO, Chris Licht. Licht. Like, okay. A lot of these liberal left leaning establishments are basically saying, listen, guys, we can't just go to one audience. <laughs> and eventually Jimmy Kimmel's going to have to veer, right? Same with Fallon. Same with Colbert. You can't just do the same shtick. It gets old. So... Kudos to SNL for at least uh, going down a path of calling out both sides, which they used to do, right? Kudos to CNN for even covering the uh, the thing that happened in Ohio. They did it way more than Fox did. Mm -hmm. So you can either learn from what happened or double down on what happened. And I, I like to see outlets that are traditionally only left-leaning at least – Embrace other opinions. That's a step in the right direction. God, call me you. diplomatic. Call me what you will. I'd like to see more. I also of that. put a, my media hat on and I think about it that somewhere inside SNL this week, and it says, Well, he's taking the heat, but the phrase SNL monologue is in the headlines, and I hope people tune in next week of to watch. Of course, yeah. 100%. And whereas Chris Licht is actually trying to get ratings back rather unsuccessfully, and he's had people like Don Lemon, Lemon, you know, have his issues. But at SNL, I think they took a bet. I think a producer said, all right, let's give it a try. And I think they're kind of happy about it because Harrelson's getting the uh, the heat, and they got a little publicity and says, hey, big things happen on SNL. Tune in next week and Good come call. check out. Good yep. call. Very By the way, before we go away from this story, this is a 2012 article. So this has nothing to do with politics. This is under Obama. And this uh, Kaylee R. Kale writes this article, 12 diseases and the lucky places they're named for. Go, let's look at some of these 12 places. Uh, number one. Uh, uh, Guinea warm. Guinea warm. <laughs> sounds like an Italian Guy, slur. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, by the way, that's almost been eradicated by the efforts of the Carter uh, Foundation. Okay. okay, so the next one is West Nile virus, mm -hmm. German measles, keep going. Racist. Pal. Ross River fever. Racist. Omsk hamor. Hemorrhagic. You want to give fever. that a shot for okay. hemorrhagic, fever. hemorrhagic fever? Ebola, hemorrhagic fever. fever. Marburg virus disease, Lassa fever, lacrosse. Encephalitis. Encephalitis. Okay, St. Louis encephalitis, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Lyme disease and Spanish flu, by the way, they don't know if it's really from uh, Spain or if it's from France or Italy. It's yeah. a debate. So they don't 100% know if it's Spanish from Spain or not to and, correct and your, that. It your could point be from is, hey, a lot of yeah, diseases normal. have it's been normal. named after the location it's of very origin, right? normal to uh, uh, name the you know a virus from where it's at. So maybe by the time this is over, they're going to finally never, name it properly I, what I, it's going to be called. I never fully got that as to why it was racist to call it from China. I never got it. Uh, well, well, cause like, they, like Trump or not, it originated in China, in Wuhan. Well, that, I, I, ne I didn't understand why that was so controversial. I think I don't, that was my point. Because like I said, the government and Fauci, do, do they had to make it racist? Even China came on. They were like, that's racist because, bro, they all got skin in the game. I'm telling you. Fauci, our government. Because, dude, what, what, imagine this. One day you find out, mm -hmm. hey, this thing that's going to be killing a million of us, millions of us, came from a lab in a country that we're, you know, we have beef yeah. with and we're paying for it. You got to be like, no, no, don't look over here. Racist. I just I feel racist. Like racist is such just a watered down term that just gets thrown out like left and right these days. Oh. That again, we're looking for accountability here, China. Yeah. And if it originated in a lab or even in a bat in your wet market, like it originated in China. Yeah. So. All I right. Don't let's get go it. to the next story. Let's yeah. go to Governor DeSantis. 
says ex Disney CEO complain of pressure over school bill uh, that they had. So let's take a look at this. So. In early 2022, former Disney CEO Bob Shapek con- uh, contacted uh, Governor Ron DeSantis to express his concern over Florida's new education bill that bans the teaching of gender identity to young children. DeSantis revealed details of the conversation in the chapter of his new memoir. Uh-oh. Why do people write memoirs? It's interesting when they write it. It's mm. typically before they make a big decision. The Courage mm. to be Free, Florida's <laughs> Blueprint for American Revival. Shapek reportedly told DeSantis that he was getting a lot of pressure away to wane against the bill stating we get pressured all the time but this time is different i haven't seen anything like this before the parental rights and education bill which was passed in march of 2022 prohibits teachers from discussing sexual orientation or gender identity in kindergarten through their third grade shapak expresses opinion to the bill stating that if it were to be passed it could be used to unfairly target gay lesbian non-binary and transgender kids and families DeSantis wrote ultimately bob shapak and disney caved to the leftist media and activists pressure and pressed a false narrative uh, against the bill, which, by the way, that leads to the next story. New York Post, uh, Governor DeSantis signs bill placing Disney District under state control. This is a February 27th story just yesterday. He assigned a bill uh, that rebrands Disney's self-governed Reedy uh, Creek Improvement District as the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District, which will now be under the state control, ending Disney's near autonomous control over the area. The bill ca- gives DeSantis the power to appoint the members of a five-person oversight board for the special district which was previously hailed by Disney. DeSantis stated that the move will bring accountability to Disney's operation in the district and that it would not lead to any additional tax burden on Floridians. The move comes after a month-long feud between DeSantis and Disney over the states. Don't say gay bill law, which bars discussions of gender identity, et cetera, et cetera. Go ahead, Adam. Thoughts on the story? Well, I, I'm going to give uh, DeSantis praise and then maybe some criticism here. Uh, I've been pretty vocal that I'm definitely more supportive of him than other candidates that are potentially running on the right. Um, I think everything comes down to optics. I mean, if the, the bill was called the parental rights of education bill, and then when it came out to marketing or backlash against the bill, it somehow turned into the don't say gay bill. That's yeah. not the name of the bill. And, you know, I don't have kids, but I am pretty open that I, I am very active in the role of my nephew. And, you know, I don't want kindergartners learning about gender and identity. This is not anything that is apparent that I would want my kids even discussing in kindergarten. It's not anything that I think is inappropriate, and I think it's actually um, spot on by why you would want to do this. But also what, what Ron DeSantis, and I think it's worked for him. I don't know if it's going to backfire. He is leading the league in going to, uh, in the culture wars, mm-hmm. you know, with... with uh, the don't say gay stuff, the LGBT stuff, the woke stuff. This is where woke goes to die. Critical race theory. That's DeSantis' playbook. He's going against the left in that in that ideology, and that's great. Here's my concern, Pat. So when you read that second story about placing bills, placing uh, placing Disney under under state control, I don't know. When I hear the term under state control, mm-hmm. that seems very uh, government overreach, not free market approach that Republicans have basically prided themselves on since pre-Reagan days. So I'm wondering if that is going to come under some sort of backlash. That, to me, is not the free enterprise and freedom which he has basically made his name on. So I think, at the end of the day, he needs to have a sit-down with Bob Iger, who's the new acting CEO of Disney. It's no longer the Chapek guy. And figure this out, because uh, once you become on the national stage and do run for president... Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a winning battle to go against Disney. Well, this has been coming for a while. So let's step back to something you just summarized there. And let me offer another perspective. The, the area, the Reedy Creek Improvement District, once upon a time, Disney took this massive piece of Florida property and developed it for theme parks. And we all know where it was, Disney World and then Epcot and all the things that are around there. And it managed that area. Roads and all this kind of stuff were managed by Disney. It also got tax benefit. So this, what Disney is being told is, hey, Florida's going to manage this the same way we manage the land and the byways and highways and streets and the rest of the city. And you don't have your autonomous control over what goes happen in the area. And we're going to take a tax benefit away from you. So basically what they're doing is 
every city out there that's ever tried to attract a manufacturer, like Toyota in Tennessee, was given tremendous tax benefits to build your factory here and create jobs. Mercedes in Alabama, and, 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 and. Disney, once upon a time, was given a tax benefit and says, come make jobs here. Come build your They were almost here. their own country. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. That's the difference. And that's not common with anybody. Yeah. Because they have their own guidelines. Yeah, because Very common un- in the uh, Native right. American community. Because now, let me it's ba- huge here in Florida. So there is some... Uh, but Native Americans right. has a reason for it because it's a way of a reparation, the negotiation they had, mm-hmm. versus Disney is, hey... That's what was similar to what Ron, L. Ron Hubbard negotiated Scientology, Scientology. to be right. a religion. It's yeah. the same way Disney negotiated for their land to be their own country, essentially. Gotcha. So well, here, are you saying that my Disney's making point. a case to start the religion of Disney? Uh, they, already, they already have one. So my <laughs> last point here to wrap it up so people can see it. But when Toyota comes I'm to joking, Tennessee, it's an established right. area. Yeah. When Toyota came to Tennessee, it was an established town. When Mercedes came to Alabama, it was an established location. When Disney was first given this, it was a swamp where they had a plan to build a city and all the stuff that went with it. So now, all those years later, DeSantis is saying, hey, you know what? We're not going to do this anymore. You're not going to be your own country, your own thing. We're going to manage this area the same way we manage everything else in the state of Florida. But let me ask you, because you bring up a great point, what was the impetus for him doing this? Wasn't it because... Disney and Bob Chapek took the lead on these culture wars that I was speaking about. And this is sort of punishment to say, you know, keep talking shit, Disney, and we're going to see what we're going to do with your tax benefits. Well, I would summarize it. I would say you're, I believe you're on the right track with that. And I think it goes like this. Hey, Disney, you know what? Thanks for nothing. Thanks for nothing. And you know, for 20 years we've been talking about your special privilege district here mm-hmm. and talking about changing it. Guess what, dude? That change happens today. So was it a little retaliatory? Yes, but this yeah. has been coming think, for a long time. I think it, it, this is how I see it. I totally get what you're saying. I, I'm about uh, debate, discourse, let's talk, let's uh, hash it out, and then give the freedom uh, uh, to do what you want to do and you know let the market decide whether they want to buy the product or not. Okay. However... Here's a question. Uh, say you have a new employee that works for you, and go five years from now, you're married with two kids, okay? And this new employee of yours is working for you. You're helping him. You're mentoring him. He comes to your house, okay? First time you let him in your house, your wife makes him a uh, meal, and let's just say your wife is very attractive, and he says, oh, wow, Mary, you look great. Wow, Adam, you've got a beautiful wife. Good for you. I go, okay, he's being friendly, no problem. All right, next time he comes back, he says it again. Now, let's just say she's wearing a dress, and she says, oh, my God, look at that body of yours. You look beautiful. No problem. You're like, okay, little, little, little too much. Next time she comes, she says, I can't believe how beautiful your lips are. You know, and you're like, okay. Easy, buddy. It's a little bit you're going, <laughs> okay, so, so watch what happens yeah. next. Watch what happens next. I don't next. like the direction but, you're going. But I'm going to tell you exactly yeah. where I'm going with this. So the no, next time, you. at this point, you're kind of like, <laughs> Okay, this is this is a first of all, I'm letting you in my house. Yeah. Then the next time he kisses your wife on the cheek, but a little too close. Okay. Like a Kamala. And, and the and hug of the hand is slightly lower. Okay. And at this point, you're sitting there saying, All right, bro, we gotta have a conversation. Okay. So then your kids are with him, and he's playing with your kids, and he's getting a little bit too much out of control. The following time, his comments are getting worse and worse and worse. At what point do you say, get the hell out of my house? What the hell are you doing? What is the matter with you? You've crossed the line. There is no more respect. Here's what Disney's done over the years. Disney was a place where families went to to have fun. Mm -hmm. No politics, no nothing. We went to have fun. Gradually, they went from saying, hey, Adam. Your kids are beautiful kids. Thank you. Hey, kids, you don't have to listen to your mom and dad what they have to say. You're a kid. You may be more creative than them. Look, ah, I'm not good. Hey, kids, how are you? You may be gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Listen, you've officially crossed the line, Disney, and here's what we have to do. 
you're being put into timeout. This is a form of a punishment for crossing the line and making it from a place of entertainment to the kids to wanting to indoctrinate and groom my kids. No, you're arrested, Disney. Here you go. So I'm fully supportive of what he did. I don't know how long this is going to be staying there. This needs to be a precedent for any other parks or places that are being built for kids to realize don't mess with other people's kids. The moment you do that, you've officially pissed off moms and dads, and now you have a bunch of enemies that are not supportive of what you're doing. So I like what he did. I think he's shown his power moves. And quite frankly, his next job is going to go from being one state, which he raised $211 million for his job as a governor, which, by the way, we didn't say this last time. It was a record. No one's ever raised that kind of money before mm. for governor, including, uh, uh, obviously, L.A., California was a bigger number when Meg Whitman was running. But it's a record for what he did. He's going to go next. What are the next things he has to tackle? Okay, what are the next things he has to tackle? Yesterday, I was watching DeSantis in a couple of interviews. I want to say he was on, I don't know what show he was. He may have been on Tucker. And if you go on his interview yesterday with Tucker, don't play it. I just want you to show his face. And let me make one, uh, 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 just a thought on what I see happening here with DeSantis. Okay, if you go to that, Zoom in on his face. He's happy. <laughs> no, 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 no. Zoom in on his face. Forget about the picture they used or not. Okay. Do you know what I notice when I see that picture? Here's what I notice. I see a man who wants to take every single shot Trump's going to take at him away from him. He does not look like a meatball. He looks like he's lost 20 pounds. He looks good. He looks like he's got a full-time trainer. Mm -hmm. He looks like he's eating vegetables. Yeah. He looks like his diet has changed. He's gotten off of starch. He looks like he may even be on some kind of supplements, amino acids, some kind of fat burner. He's looking very, very good. When that day comes, when he hits the stage, he wants every single thing to be gone. Now, let me make my prediction. Go ahead. The moment if President Trump makes a comment about meatball, he's going to say, well, let me just give you some facts here because I know, President Trump, you're about the truth. Yep. Mm -hmm. Here's some facts. Mm -hmm. Based on your doctors, this is your height, this is your weight. Oh, wow. My doctor gave me my height, my <laughs> weight, my body fat. Here's where I'm at. I'm taking care of my health. Wow. I think it's important. I think he's strategically wow. planning to show everybody how healthy he freaking is is and it's gonna go viral oh my god i'm telling look at his face and, oh, look what he looks like and if I was, and he what, looks amazing what, one he of, looks younger than three years ago yep. he looks really good and one of his hits is gonna be this and uh mr president my tan is better than yours <laughs> you orange i don't know about bastard. that yeah, I, mean, I, look at him. I mean he's orange -ish. i know he's looking really he looks good, good. but no, the point really is does. he's looking really really good if he's yeah. You know, camp. Uh, I know their camp follows the content here. He's uh, shout out to him for taking care of his and health. And you That's see, you, great see you see what and you you see what's happening. Like the campaign is it's it's rolling out for itself. He's such a likable guy. His 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 military, his seal, his you know you know his wife. Thank God she's okay. Everything, the family, everything's coming together. He's showing everybody, uh, Pat, don't mess with the kids. Leave the kids alone. He showed everybody that Florida kicks ass with COVID and like this is the place to be. And he's not gonna lock you down. I'm telling you right now, bro. He's gonna be a hard guy to beat. Do you, Do you think he actually is likable, or he's trying to become more likable? I, because here's here's where I'm going with this, and this I, I granted this is a New York Times article, and they basically gave a uh, book review. They're basically saying this is someone with no charisma or no humor, which is I would tend to agree. I've never heard Ron DeSantis make a funny joke. I've never been like that's the kind of guy I want to get a beer with. But I'll tell you what, uh, I'm okay with a serious president. <laughs> I'm okay with someone with credibility. I'm okay with someone who's non nonsense. Yeah. I'm okay with that. So. My only question is, how much is charisma? Because of the seven elements of what makes a president, wasn't like the deciding factor their charisma? What was that whole, that friendly bet that you had with uh, with our buddy, the uh, pollster? I, I don't remember it, but you're yeah, right. Charisma okay. is one of them. Yes. Charisma is one of them. So there's no denying that Trump has charisma. He, charisma for days. It's just, is he as serious as a candidate as Ron DeSantis is, is potentially going to be. But I absolutely think Pat's analysis is spot on. He's trying to take every single piece of ammunition away. Oh, oh maybe I am war. 20 pounds overweight. Yep. Let me lose 20 pounds, look my best. Him. Meanwhile, Trump's not getting any... Th Let me tell he's you. He's looking no, real, thick. The, memoir, <laughs> real the memoir, thick. the memoir is a reason why he's going... You know, it's like, oh, I, I know for a fact he's going to run all this other... 
The reason why I'm now certain this guy is going to announce that he's running is because he's lost weight. <laughs> You're right. I'm telling you because he understands optics. Whoever's yeah. on the inside with his consultants, they're saying, look at John F. Kennedy on the camera, how great he looked. Mm-hmm. There, I, there's some stuff with the forehead looks good. You know, there's some <laughs> things in Florida. We are in a very, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know what you Botox do with the, and bam, stuff bam, like that. you know, yeah. he's looking really good. So right. go ahead, Tom. You were going to say something. No, I, I'm looking forward to the campaign and. By the way, the primary candidates are coming out. It's starting to happen because I think America is ready for the election. It's going to be bloody rolling into it because right now we don't have a president. We have elder abuse. You know, we've got, I think, some things coming that I think are going to be good. And I think this is a sign of one of the many people that are going to be running. And let's face it, DeSantis is running, that are getting revved up for their, whether it's your Five minutes in the spotlight, Nikki Haley, because you want to position yourself for a position, which is, I think, what's happening there. Or you want to make your point on national stage, Marianne Williamson. Or you really want to be part of it and you want to run. Um, I, I don't. I think you hit the nail on the head with the elder Bruce. Gavin thing. Newsom. <laughs> I think there is yeah. such a yearning in our country for if you're 75 plus, what? thank you for your, your, your service. Thank you for serving the country. It's time for the millennial and Gen Xers to really step up now. What? And that is DeSantis's uh, uh, You role. mean you're you're not... I'm having... F- I, I'm starting to like Biden more. Like, did you see what he said yesterday? Well, I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> Biden, Trump, love Pelosi, Schumer, like- McConnell. Oh. Thank you for your service left and right. Peace out. But I don't know I don't know if we're ready for somebody that serious because I love... Like Biden yesterday, he was t- speaking for the Black History Month. He said something about the Divine Nine and he was like, I may be a white boy, but I'm not stupid and got a standing ovation. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gonna miss that just goofy old. Yeah, right. He's well, like a f- comedy guy. You can always go back and Along watch the highlight. The, videos, <laughs> yes, the yeah, highlight good. videos. The highlight of, of look. Uh, he, Every week, how many, how many tripping on the stairs videos? Oh my god! Last week whole, we did got. Did you see two. the one with the balloon hits him? No, no. Did you see the one in Ukraine where actually somebody was on the back stairs? Her <laughs> first one fell and took out three took other out, people. <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. It's like yeah. So now we have fail videos courtesy oh, of the did, president. Did you see what he said? This is this is yesterday, Pat. He was speaking in D.C. about Black History Month about the divine nine let's look at watch this i i, I may be a white boy but i'm not stupid <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I know where the power like, is. oh my god i know where the you think i'm joking you think i'm joking i learned a long time ago about the <laughs> I, I, look at the girl on the right the, the, the sign language the power, girl is the best he goes oh, I'm i not thought she stupid. was throwing up gang <laughs> she looks like it oh, god. actually i was that. i was I'm offended by that. that i think in the middle of black history months where there's so much to look back on in america let me um yeah. i think when you're pandering for the crowd like of course. that, I think what that's, is that? I think that's F. Wait, up. what is what is that? Is that true? That was yesterday, yeah. Uh, zooming on, is this picture real? No. <laughs> is this real or no? Wait, you're serious. This is real. Stop. No. <laughs> when is this? Stop it. This that's can't in be College real. Park, Georgia. Can no, someone no, no. please uh, fact check? No. Friday, this is real. March third. That might okay. be fake. Oh oh Kamala <laughs> Cardi B. Listen, Harris. Knock it off, man. Uh, Take this. That is hilarious. By the way, oh someone's God. gonna go say, "Where's Kamala?" Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Pimping okay. ain't easy, Joe. Oh so, 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 uh, uh, what oh. is this you put up? Run down of COVID leadership, Florida. Yeah. Oh, this is the so, book. But, but here's what I want to do. What you just did transitions into a story I want to read to you. This is what happens when you keep calling whites racist. Mm-hmm. It turns on you, and then you have to make your argument. So watch this. Very interesting. Most hated. White student sues historically black college for $2 million over racial discrimination. Okay? <laughs> over racial discrimination. Somebody, how could you say this is racist? No, no. It's just using your own, you know, play. It's a play out of your playbook that you've been using. Uh A white student, Michael Newman, who attended Howard University's law school from the fall semester of 2020 to September of 2022, is using the institution for racial discrimination, claiming that the school created a hostile education environment. Newman is seeking $2 million in monetary damages for pain, suffering, emotional anguish, and damage to his reputation. Newman suffered depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts as a result of public ostracism. Uh, vilification and humiliation, and the lawsuit claims that the student at the schools responded with references to his race, gender, sexual preference, age, and personal preference, personal appearance after learning of a tweet from New- Newman's private Twitter account that included a picture of a slave with a caption, but we don't know what he did before the picture was taken. Newman's lawyers will try to prove the school broke its contract with Newman, a student who attended on a scholarship after a series of incidents and accusations led to multiple review panels and hearings that resulted in his expulsion. You know, you know what happens when you scream 
racism, 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 racism constantly. Well, you water it down for when <clears throat> somebody really is being victimized. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you have a story like this and then you have to argue. Well, no, racism doesn't exist in this college. No, racism doesn't exist in the NBA, even though 70% are African Americans. No, racism doesn't exist in XYZ. Then arguments get lost. For example, you know that one meme that's uh, gone viral and a bunch of... By the way, this meme was posted on PBD Podcast. And Instagram immediately, immediately corrected it. Did you see this meme that uh, <laughs> some of these memes they put on PBD podcast? I, mm-hmm. I, uh, uh, Funny. Uh, uh, well, I, 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 I got to tell you, the guys that manage PBD, I manage Instagram PBD, but PBD podcast is managed by uh, uh, our guy <laughs> who's a beast. Uh, he posted something. Go up to see if it's all the way at the top. Th- that's the one that's hidden. It's the one that's hidden with warning. Go lower. A warning? That one on right it? there. Click on that one. Okay, so watch this. Uh, see why. Look what this meme says. What? It's okay with the fact checker. Zoom in on the fact checker. Oh, we'll, we'll go to the fact checkers afterwards. Okay. First, let's read what this meme is. Can we see the meme? It has to allow you to see the meme. It says see post, post on the bottom. the bottom. Look what this says. I wonder why there are no women transitioning to men, men and trying to compete in men's sports. Why is that so? But you, well, they, they Wait, flagged just, it? just read it one more time. I wonder why there are no women transitioning to men and trying to compete in men's sports. It's a lot harder to do. It's a lot harder to of do. Of course. So Instagram fact checks it. I go back on it to read this fact check. Uh, uh, go back to, you had it right the first time. Click on time. the go CY. CY. Yeah. Yep. And zoom in. The same false information was reviewed by another fact checker. There, are, there, are, there may be small differences in the pan. It says fact check. It's not true. That no athletes assigned female at birth transitioned and tried to compete in men's sports lead stories. Okay. Wow. Tell me how many stories of women became men that try to compete in swimming, in wrestling, in uh, uh, in Olympics, in sprinting. T- tell me in 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 what yeah. in what that we read about mm-hmm. that you've actually read about. I'm sure it's happened. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's happened. But tell me when you've seen it, when it became a big story, and they won at the highest level that we had to see. Yeah. Where other men are like, no, 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 it's not fair that you're transitioning when. Yeah. See, this, this is the great thing about debate and patience. Because what happens with bad ideas, if you're patient, just give it time. Eventually, bad ideas are going to be, ex- be exposed on their own, without you even making an effort. You know when your kids sometimes say, Daddy, I'm, I'm, I haven't gone through it yet, but I'm about to go through it. My kids are right now what? They're, they're 19 months old, you know, 6 years old, 9 years old, 11 years old. You know what phase I'm in right now with my kids? Mm. Every parent with their kids goes through three phases. Phase number one, they idolize you, okay? Phase number two, they demonize you. Yeah. Phase number three, they humanize you. Guess what phase I'm in with my kids right now? They idolize me. They love it's you. a good phase. They love me. I don't do anything wrong today, right? Give it a couple years. Yeah. Give it a couple years where they're going to say what? Dad, you have no clue <laughs> what you're talking about. All you care about is capitalism. Yeah. Do you know the <laughs> roots of capitalism? Do you know what Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin yeah. Franklin and Benjamin Rush and George Washington and Abraham, do you know what they did? Mm. How could you, yeah. Dad? How could you? And I'm going to say, honey, son, uh, Tico, Dylan, Senna, bro, whatever which one you are, I'm going to be like, okay, bro. <laughs> it, it, I'm patient. Okay. In about 10 years, you're going to realize how shitty of an idea you're buying into right now. Yeah. I'm patient. Don't worry. The same thing that a parent has to go through with their kids is the same thing that the populace has to go through in the media, a certain institution, a political party, a certain sect decides to impose a dumb idea that makes no sense and has zero common sense. And all you have to do is, oh, my God, how long is it going to take till you realize how dumb of an idea this is? Yeah. I'm patient. I'm going to be right here. Anyways, it looks like you're trying to show something. So whatever you're trying to do. You made us read books, Dad, you yeah. jerk. I hate you. I love what those I'm kids smart. did. Any thoughts on this? Because before no, we good. go on, you guys are doing something with Rob. Rob, were you, you guys was Adam something? sending you a story or no? Okay. No, no you no. guys are good. Oh, you guys well, are good. I, I, would this be a natural progression to, to to talk about a transition to talk about that Dilbert situation? What were you the looking recent? at here? You were looking at. I was just looking at the Instagram. Oh, okay. What was a natural to the, what Dilbert? The Dilbert situation? That's also has to do with racism. Did you read that story? Go for it. Which one is that? That's the story about what happened with the creator of Dilbert. I mean, since we're on the topic of this racism, yeah. cartoonist read. says a rebuke of Dilbert creator Scott Adams is long overdue. So here's the story. So and by the way, Elon Musk laid into the laid uh, weighed in on this. So. 
Elon Musk recently took to Twitter to suggest that the U.S. media is now racist against white people and Asian people as he seemingly defended the Dilbert comic strip creator Scott Adams who made racist comments that led to several newspapers dropping his cartoon. Musk wrote, for a very long time, the U.S. media was racist against non-white people. Now they're racist against whites and Asians. So, same thing happened with elite colleges and high schools in America. Maybe they can try not being racist. So here's what happens. Adam's comments came after Erasmus's poll revealed that 53% of black Americans agreed with the statement, it's okay to be white. Weird number. In response, <laughs> Adams posted an online video, which he said, if nearly half of all blacks are not okay with white people, that's a hate group. I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is get the hell away from black people because there's no fixing this. Jesus Christ, I mean, Scott Adams here. <laughs> that's a little That's a little too too crazy. But I think there's, there is a misconception out there, though, that... Like, if you're a certain rate, you can't be racist towards white people. And I'm sorry, bro. If you hate a race and you're always like, I hate white people or, the, or you know, you cracker. Dude, dude, that's that's a racial that's a racial story. You're being racist. It's, but it's apparently- either it's either be OK with it. Yeah. And have a thicker skin or stop doing it on both sides. Exactly. Very simple. So guess guess what's believe it or not. You know, uh. But- I'll tell you what. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you have to understand that either position you make and you take, you're going to contradict yourself. Of course. You're going to end up being a hypocrite. And the American people are going to sit there and say, yeah, you're full of shit. I'm not buying it. That's what's yeah. going to happen. Just You just have to be patient with it. Anyways, yeah. uh, did you want to say more things no, I'll about this? I'll just say this, one or? thing. Um, it is sad or unfortunate to see this number. You know, 53% of black people in this poll uh Agreed that it's okay to be white. Sort of a shocking number. But I think his response and his approach is actually pretty disgusting. So he says, his answer is, I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, based on the current things they're going, the best advice is to give white people and stay the hell away from black people. That's a racist piece of shit, if you ask me. Maybe he actually is racist. So for me, as I hear that, because I'm more of a natural synergist, I would want to say, hey, you know, I would say something. If this was my cartoon, Dilbert, I would say... You know, the old uh, Rodney King thing, why can't we all get along? Let's work on this. Let's work on this together. You know, I get that you've been wronged and, and there's things that we need to address. But his approach is is the exact opposite of way I would go. Not deal with black people? What does that even mean? Yeah. So to me, that is uh, counterintuitive to what you're doing. But you do need a, a strong African-American leader like Elon Musk to step up in a moment like this. <laughs> yeah. Good call. He is from South Africa. I think the poll speaks for itself and it's really unfortunate. Um, I, you know, to have any group of people have that kind of a position yeah. and, the, and the way he commentated because he moved from just talking about a poll into commentated and the way he commentated was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. However, we've had a recent guest and um, we've also seen the, the lawsuit brought by Asian Americans against Yale on discriminatory practices on admissions. So we are seeing uh precedents out there where people are saying hey when the pendulum swings the other way you have to understand it it, you 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 are you are making a bias against somebody and a bias against anybody is not good so anyway yeah you know my kids uh uh, dylan asked me a question they said say daddy so so when people ask me in school what am i what do i say i said what do you mean he says uh, uh, do i say i'm half white I'm 9% Italian, I'm half Assyrian, I'm half Armenian. How do I explain? I said, listen, you got to be proud of all of it. Mm -hmm. It's what you are, okay? You are half American. You have a little bit of Italian in you, according to ancestry. I don't know anyone in our family that's hooked up. Neither one has said who, but uh, there's some Italian in there. (laughs) And then you got Armenian and Assyrian, and you got to be proud of it all. And that's how God created you, and we get along with everybody, okay? And when they have a Christmas, when we have a birthday party, here's Tico. Tico wanted 55 of his classmates <laughs> to come to his freaking birthday party. 55? I mean, there's like three fifth grades. He says, I want everybody to come. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so we have 55. And by the way, you know what happens when kids turn 11 years old? Parents, if you're listening to this, this is not cool. <laughs> I am not a babysitter. Here's what they do when kids oh, turn God. 11. Parents came. 
dropped off their kids. They left no. for three hours, came back three hours to pick them up. No. You know what I'm going to next time? I'm going to give them a bill of freaking $5,000. Of course. $5, yeah. <laughs> Babysitting bill. Especially with, pool, think, yeah. especially with anyway, water I mean, in listen, the pool. We had fun. Right, but the correct. point is when, when the kids' friends came, dude, it's like you got uh, United Nations was in the yeah. backyard. It was awesome. But uh, it is what it is. I want to go to the story here. I want to go to the story here. Do you have the uh, tweet about uh, uh, El Salvador and what they're doing there to uh, their MS-13 gangs and what happens to uh, their stats? Do you have that video? If, if you don't, I think I sent it to you on Twitter. It's funny when I posted this. I, I, very interesting what Twitter did all of a sudden. I don't even know if Twitter's or Elon is even aware of this or not. I'll just send it to you right now. It's got a few million views online. I think it's important for you to see this. Here's the link. It's a Twitter clip to show i just send it to you just go to my own uh uh go to my twitter yeah and then uh go to media go to media to the right and let's see how low to let you go keep going keep going keep going okay that one right there now watch this yeah zoom out a little bit okay oh, uh uh play this clip from the beginning it's a one minute clip turn on the audio please there you go just play this clip and listen to this folks and tell me if you think this is a good idea or a bad idea watch this it looks like a sea of skin and tattoos these images released by El Salvador's government shows the transfer of about 2,000 inmates stripped to their shorts and with their heads shaved to what's been dubbed the country's new mega prison. It just opened. It's believed to be the largest prison in the Americas with a capacity for 40,000 people. And it's the latest step in a controversial crackdown on crime that's caused the country's prison population to soar. Watch the stats, though. Human rights organizations have reported God, that innocent people have been caught up in the law enforcement campaign. That includes dozens, they Notice say. Notice all their faces are covered, so yeah. these guys don't Constant remember gangs, them. Yeah. Last year, the country's president asked Congress for emergency powers to temporarily suspend some constitutional rights after a massive spike in murders attributed to gang crime. It includes that arrests can be made without a warrant and detainees no longer have a right to a lawyer. Private communications of all citizens can also be accessed by the government. Since then, about 64,000 suspects have been arrested. The murder reports fell about 57%. Did you hear that? Last yeah. Year. Okay, go back, go back 10 seconds to hear that stat again. It's important for the audience to hear that. Go right there, right there and play it. Listen to the stat. The government. Since then, about 64,000 suspects have been arrested. The murder reports fell about 57%. Wow. Wow. Year. Okay, so pause it. Commentary wow. on it is wild. Uh, this Reuters, for whatever reason, flagged this for me and said, warning, they put a warning on this tweet because it might have sensitive content. I'm like, this is not even my tweet. I'm retweeting a Reuters tweet. What the and Reuters didn't get the warning. I got the warning. I'll send it to you, Rob, if you want to put it up there. So is this a good idea or is this a bad idea with what El Salvador is doing? 64,000 people arrested. Crime is down 57%. I think it's great. I Tom. think it's great. Um, I, I think people need to go back and take a look at what really happened in California when Kamala Harris was attorney general, the three strikes law, uh, Wackenhut uh, building more prisons there, which is prisons for profit. And you see what happened in California. They were trying to drop the, uh, the crime rate too. And so uh, I, I think what they're trying to do, they have this they have this terrible crime problem, and they're like, all right, let's just round up all the MS-13 gang members, and let's watch the statistics. And unless they're monkeying with the numbers, um, you've got a 57% drop in murders. Okay, well, guess what's happening? They're getting the outcome they wanted, and you could debate whether you like the way they're doing it, but this is the outcome they wanted, less murders in their community. Or dra drastic measures. Times calls for drastic measures. If the no yo and the stats don't lie, fifty percent murder rate down. I'm sorry, bro. If you look like that and you're doing some gangster shit, bye bye. I have no remorse. Adam. Zero. Yeah, I, I, bye. What What is even the pushback here? Can you go? Can you go, <laughs> go to the tweet? Wonder what the go to the tweet and let's read some of the comments. I think that's the best thing to do. Just go to the tweet, and let's read some of the comments. Uh, yeah, go to the tweet. So zoom in a little bit so we can say tough on crime is good, but not by suspending their constitution. So click on it to read the replies. That's Jake Shields. Uh, I agree. Okay, uh, I agree. But at the same time, if you legitimately commit violent crimes, 
you forfeit your rights. The only area of concern is the judicial system being corrupt, innocent people being convicted. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, let's read. How many innocent people died because certain individuals weren't in police custody? Go to the next one. I was in El Salvador before they were uh, rounded up and uh, your life was in danger every second you left your house. This is good. Makes me happy. Citizens that want to just make a living. Focus on being harder on crime. Focus on punishing criminals. Focused on squeezing as many criminals in one place as possible can only lead to bad outcomes. Um, instead, focus needs to be shifted from punishing people to rehabilitating criminals. Here we go. Yeah. Into functioning citizens. Okay. How do you do that is the question everyone's asking, right? I've only, I've known family members that we hope uh, could be rehabilitated. The unfortunate reality is that the probability of success is quite low. If the cartel was terrorizing your town, murdered your family members, I have a feeling you would say something different. Bingo. Huh. Yeah, okay, see. during a time which resembles 1930s, previous decade marked by conflict and eroding world order to COVID, declining institutional trust as multiple layers and across the world spectrum, I feel this doesn't end here. My mother-in-law is, uh, uh, is El Salvadorian. She grew up there and just went on vacation there and came back last week. She said she felt so much safer this time than any time she can remember. Mm -hmm. They could stay out and go to restaurants at night. She thanked God for it. Wow. I mean, these, this, is, this is the great thing about a platform like this because you're seeing different sides and arguments people are making. Go ahead. Well, I mean, we say this all the time about the number one thing a mother is concerned is her kids. And are her kids, what's the S word, safe? So if you're just trying to, we, we talk about if you could go live anywhere and start a country, where would you go? The number one thing is, are you safe? And it just would seem to be with all these gang members running around El Salvador, just people don't feel safe. And, you know, numbers don't lie. If murder has gone down 53% <laughs> yeah. since they've started rounding up the MS-13 gang members. Uh, the, the numbers speak for themselves. I think it's a great thing. You know, I, 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 I get why there is some pause for concern, you know, are you eliminating the Constitution, whatever that was? Yeah. But whatever they were doing wasn't working. Yeah. It was a murder. It was a murder country. Yeah. So uh, kudos for taking some and, action. And here. did you, I, you guys saw what I saw? Every single one of those guys, they, they look identical. Tatted same up. tats, yeah. same shaved heads. Uh, uh, dude, those guys don't need to be on public. And that's, that's MS 13. Those guys are, they're not just regular gang members. Though. Those guys are ruthless, bro. Yeah. They're nuts. By the Look way, at that. You, all the same guy. Very easy to identify you if you have tattoos all on over your, your head. face and body. By, yeah. by the way, the, it, there's a speech that the president of El Salvador gave. Okay. Um, oh, is it still? Uh, is El Salvador the country that has been the Bitcoin country? Yeah, is it? It, yes. Nayib Boutelli? Yes, is yes, that the same Butelli. guy? Yes. Oh, about time they cleaned this up. It's the same guy that's been he's a, doing a it. hero of the crypto world. He's doing it. Okay, great. It's making sense. By, now. by the way, he gave yeah. a speech. It's on my Instagram account. Yeah, it's two minutes long. It's in it's in Spanish, but there's a, a what do you call it? Captions there. You have to read the speech he gives. It gives me it's it's a long time ago. It's like probably three weeks ago I posted this. It gives me the chills. If you can keep going down, you'll find it. It gives me the chills on the message he, right there, right there. He gives this message. We don't have to play it right now, but you know. Uh, uh, the, the, the way he talks, he says, we know we're a small country. We know our limits, but we're not going to stay small. Hmm. Okay. We're not here to just be another country in El Salvador. You guys think big, you guys have great things. We respect you a lot. We respect what you've done, but we want to be there as well. The guy speaks like a guy you want speaking on behalf of your country. That's not apologizing. He's saying our crime is this. He's saying all this up, but we're going to get better and we're going to be a great country. Versus apologizing constantly for being white, apologizing for believing in capitalism, apologizing for being a country that's whooped on everybody, being ashamed of who you are. There's a lot of pride to the way this man speaks. Yeah. Leaders who have pride in their nationality, in their country, in their people, understanding to stay humble, stay, you know, a reasonable individual. He sounds like someone like that. He doesn't raise his voice. He speaks very calmly. If you've not heard this speech before, highly recommend watching this speech. It's powerful. Anyways, I got a couple other stories I want to uh, t talk about here before we wrap up. And uh, by the way, some of you guys are watching this. You you're commenting, you're messaging, saying, hey, you know, I kind of like what you got on. Let me show you the back of this, which is sick. Check this out. I love out. that. Dude, that is so badass. The whole, uh, 
Uh, uh, anyways, we're having a whole new military gear that's coming out. Love it. Shout uh, out to being a, a, a guy that I have a lot of respect for our veterans. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And being the airman of the year in the entire <laughs> Air Force. That's uh, one of these uh, coming out, Pat. These, well, but the whole series is about to be launched with green value, Tim and Future Looks Bright Hats. Sick. But this is just a teaser. The shirt quality is amazing. It's one of my favorite quality shirts to wear. If you would like to sport one of these, you're a veteran or you love America or you love our military or you support our military, uh, I suggest you go get this value team shirt. On the front of it, it says business is war. It's just the reality how business yeah. works. Get this new one. This is new gear being dropped for the first time here today. Uh, put the link below, Rob, for people to be able to get it. And I think there's people that want to... Uh, uh, participate in merch that we have. If you do want to be the first to find out about the drop that we're having, text the word MERCH to 310-340-1132. One more time, MERCH, M-E-R-C-H, text it to 310-340-1132. If you text that, you're going to get the direct link back of this shirt to place the order uh, uh, since we have the sizes right now before the sizes sell out. Anyways, okay, last thing I want to talk about. With the story, we just went into military, and I want to wrap it up with a couple stories on military. So you know how we're sitting there and we're watching how much U.S. keeps giving to Ukraine, keeps giving to Ukraine. And Yellen just went there this week, and she announced that they're giving an additional 1.2, but, 1. Then, 2 but billion, promising 10 billion. But promising 10, right? Here's yeah. 1.2, but promising 10, <laughs> uh, 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 but promising 10, uh, and... You know, so people are like, oh, my God, how much more money? I think the total right now is $114 billion, give or take. Okay? Do you realize a couple things? You know what's the fastest way to stop this war? If you're so worried about 300,000 people that have died with the number that you give us, 200,000 on the Russia's and 100,000 on Ukraine's end, you know what's the fastest way to finish the war? Hmm. Do you know what's the fastest way to finish the war? Stop giving money. Yeah. Do you realize that? If you really don't want war, stop giving money and set up the meeting how come you haven't done that? Hmm. It's as if America wants this war to continue. Yeah. So when a Tulsi Gabbard or some of these guys get up and they talk about the uh, military-industrial com complex, you keep funding this, there's a reason why millions of people resonate with what Tulsi Gabbard and others have to say. Mm -hmm. Maybe you do want war. Maybe this is a business model. Maybe there is a benefit of us doing this to continue this model that we're going with all these wars. Because if America truly wants no war right now, you can stop the money. You can stop sending weapons. And if you do that, Ukraine has no choice to say, let's talk. Let's figure something out. Right now, watch this. If you can pull up one of the things that we've been sending to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, Ukraine is these Javelin missile launchers. Okay, a couple stats I want you to see with this year. If you can go back to the first one, go all the way to the first one, go one more. There's one other picture I sent you, uh, uh, which is the budget that we have. Okay, zoom in on this picture here. Take a look at this. This is our budget in 2021 versus other militaries' budget that we have. U.S. 801 in 2021. Look at China. Look at India. You could look at UK. Look at everyone else. We have a massive military budget that we have. A big chunk of this is financing the 800 military bases that we have, okay? Trying to solve other people's problems. But the one thing we've given to, to, to uh, Ukraine a lot is 8,500 javelins to Ukraine. That's what U.S. has committed. If you want to Google what a javelin is and what it looks like, military Ukraine, so people can see it, 8,500 of them that's been given to Ukraine. There's a reason why Ukraine is doing so well We're against Russia ass. because we yeah. this is not a war with Ukraine against Russia this yeah. is a war of US versus Russia okay period it's public it's not even something we're hiding we've given 8500 of those to Ukraine so what's the big deal it, you know somebody may say what's not what's the big deal about these javelins we're giving to them uh, Raytheon and Lockheed Martin have both said that what's been pledged from US in existing stock they cannot do double the production and give America back what they have till 2026. Meaning, everything we pretty much have on stock of javelins, we've pretty much given to who? To, to Ukraine. Ukraine. Okay? These are the numbers that we've given to them just to support what they got going on. So now, as you get closer with this article that Wall Street Journal has, they show this data. Tom, you're going to love this here. If you can show this on the screen so our audience can see this. These are the numbers of contractors U.S. had in 1980 that we did business with, okay? 
when I say contractors, defense company contractors, okay, that this is where we got our weapons from. So if you look at this, Vinny, 1981, there was 51 companies we did business with. Every year or so, one or two got bought out. Mm -hmm. We went from 51 to how many? Down to five. Oh, wow. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, and General Dynamics, okay? So one could look at this and say, well, what's uh, the big deal with this? Show the next data if you go to this one. Go two more. Go one more, okay? From 1990, the number of contractors we had, wow. tactical missile suppliers we had 13 that we bought from. We only have three today. Fixed-wing aircraft suppliers we had eight. We got three today. Satellite suppliers we had eight. We got four today. Builders of surface ships we had eight. We have two today, okay? D these guys that keep buying up these companies, this is essentially being a similar model to banks. How many banks do we have in 1980s? A ton of them. Mm -hmm. How many banks do we have today? It's really only five companies. Or cell phone companies. Cell phone companies. Or retail, the same as Amazon, Walmart, everything. Everything is going to this. Consolidation. Everything. I remember being on a call with FTC when one of the bigger insurance technology companies, it's a behemoth. If you're in the insurance, we don't say the name. If you're in the insurance industry, you know who I'm talking about. They were about to buy up another competitor whom we were doing business with, both of them. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, we would like to know XYZ. They're asking because they were pretty much having a monopoly. Mm -hmm. Some of these guys have so much control right now, which the problem becomes the following. Mm -hmm. Is America, you know how you raise money and all of a sudden you buy 50 different companies? Mm -hmm. One by one by one by one by one. You keep buying other companies because you have the money. And then all of a sudden, what happens to you? You wake up one day, you're like, Dude, we got 400 companies that we bought the last five years. We have no clue how to manage these companies. One by one, they're going bankrupt. What the hell are we going to do? You've stretched yourself so thin. You now have four, 500 military bases to manage. How do you do that? The problem today with America is if we keep giving all these weapons to other people, our own supply is getting weaker, and Northrop and Raytheon are saying, we can't replace this for you till 2026, wow. that's three years. Our own military is getting weaker. The more we try to support everyone, God forbid if the enemy realizes that military in US is experiencing this, what does that tell you? That's an opportunity for what? Attack. To attack. Of course. To realize, hey, they're not as strong as we once thought. Of course. That's a real threat. And to say that we're getting this close to a potential war, this is the closest we've been since, you know, what do you want to call it, the Cuban? Missile crisis? I would say that's the closest we've been where we could be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And we keep poking the bear. So then the story leads to this. And then, Tom, I want to get your thoughts on this first. And, Vinny, I'm going to come to you next okay. as our AI expert. So, so <laughs> sto story comes out. Putin will die in office or with bullets in his back as despots' futures predicted. Okay? So this is a story on page 13. War expert Nate Sibley believes that Vladimir Putin will die while serving as president of Russia and that he could be assassinated. Sibley states that Putin's watch carefully as other Soviet Union leaders try to extricate themselves from authoritarian regimes as they failed and that whatever his future holds, it is increasingly unlikely to be a happy ending, either of old age or bullets in his back. Putin has previously survived several assassination attempts with Oliver Stone stating in 2012 interview that he had heard of five attempts. Putin himself responded, I do my job and the security officers do theirs, and they're still performing quite successfully. Putin's health has been a subject of much speculation over the years with claims that he has Parkinson's and travels with a thyroid cancer doctor. However, he has stated in the past that he has no plans to retire and he has changed the Constitution to allow him to rule indefinitely, making modern-day Russia a true autocracy. So... With all this stuff going on in the world and the uncertainties that we have, I, I just think America may want to kind of step back and take an inventory. Are we as strong as we act like we are? Or we have stretched ourselves so thin around the world that this may have given an opening for somebody to say, you know what, if there's ever been a time to attack, maybe this is the time. Obviously, nobody wants to see war. This next one won't be pretty. The goal is to prevent this war. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, 
every Russian leader dies in office because as much as they say, oh, we have elections here. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> your, your guy serves until he doesn't, right? That, that's the way that is. And to say, well, he'll either die in office, which is a certainty, or he'll die in office with assistance, you know, because he's going to get shot. I, I, there, I don't think there's really a story there. But what, what you're talking about is where is the United States really on the world stage? And I agree with you. If you just unload the cupboard and give all this stuff to the Ukraine, the first thing I worry about is, you know, Ukraine is kind of depleted on their own military, Pat. You know, how do we feel when Russians capture a Ukrainian unit and they get a hold of a couple of these? Now they got our stuff and they can take it apart and figure it out and, you know, copy it. That's always been part of war is capture the other guy's crap and then reverse engineer it or find out the secrets that are inside his weapons. And I, I think that the U.S. on a world stage right now, you know, is is a little bit depleted. Now, this is a defense contractor saying it's going to take me five years to, I mean, two years to rebuild all those missiles. And can I uh, can I send you an invoice today? <laughs> you know, so it's it's also. People sit there and go, uh, hey, buy some Raytheon today. Why, oh, what, by the way, I'm sure those guys are loving what's of going on course. today. I'm sure they're saying, send more stuff to Ukraine. Of send more stuff to Ukraine. Because i got to replace it for you, and there's only five of us. Yeah, there's, well, the there's defense only four contractors, we're competing against. The defense contractors, believe it or not, lobby for a thing called war games, where you see the war games going on. Yeah, they do that in South Korea a lot. Yeah, right? they, they lobby for the use of it. Um, and now, obviously, they don't use nukes in war games, but they use up a lot of stuff. Uh, they do simulations. They do a lot of things. And then you need replacement parts. You need all the stuff. And it's another invoice to the defense contractors. But to your core point, yeah, I, I do think we're, we're getting slightly weakened on an international stage in terms of actual um, readiness of having the tools that we need to fight. And then we're also, I think, getting weak because, you know, we could do five podcasts in a row on the flip flops on Ukraine. We're just going to let, hey, it's not our business. It's from, it's not our business to here's billions of dollars worth of stuff to fight. Remember where this started? Uh, uh, we're not going to get involved in a proxy war and be shipping our stuff over there. Uh, okay, give them some tanks. Remember this? Yeah. It's been a slippery slope. And so we, I don't think our position looks very strong. We change every three weeks and I, I think we're weaker on a world stage. I think the the best what's the uh, saying in football where the Ravens won the two best Super Bowls. Offense is defense. Yeah, the best think, offense is a great defense. Yes. That's what Ronald Reagan said. If we have a great military defense, guess <clears throat> what? No one is doing anything now. You know how you know you create fun account like you're like, hey, you know, I have a savings, your investment, your this, and you create a what? You create a splurge account or whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. You know what the fun account, splurge account is to me? Here's the weapons that we can give to others for support. But we will never touch what we need to be protected. So this is what we need to be protected. Guess what? Yeah. The javelin, we're hitting shortage. We can only give you 700. We can't give you the whole 8,600. Yeah. Th those are the things. As long as we're playing within those parameters, then we can support those that have generally been a good ally to us. I'll, I'll just say this. Mm. Uh, I think... We have every right to question the amount of money that is going to Ukraine, okay? What I think is unquestionable is standing up to authoritarian regimes who are invading sovereign nations. I mean, if you look at this, this, this article, right, Ukraine is the West War now. Uh, it's not just the U.S. It is the entire, you know, Western world, Western civilization, the EU, NATO, okay? But here it is. The Western Alliance's geopolitical adversaries are calculating whether the U.S. and its allies have the stamp, stamina and the cohesion to defend, here it is, the rules-based international order that has benefited the West for decades. The future of Taiwan, of Taiwan and South China Sea is closely linked to the West's record in Ukraine. So there's precedent, there's rules, there's a rules-based international order like we've said before, you can't just go invade a country. What precedent does that does that establish? So next thing you know, he invades Ukraine, and then then it's what? He takes over Kiev, he owns Ukraine now. And then it's Poland, and then what happens? So at some point, the, the only thing that strong men respond to is the word no. <clears throat> you can't do shit like this, Putin. We have every right to question how much money we're spending. Totally right. But to stand, you know, there's hard power and there's soft power. 
right now we need to be projecting both. Hard power is actually fighting in wars, but soft power yeah. is also standing for democracy. No, no, nobody, like, for example, yeah. what FDR did to get a third term, you know, and what Putin's doing to get a third term and what he was doing to, uh, what was his name, Zavalny or uh, uh, Navalny, you know, what was his... Uh, in, uh, Russia? Uh, in Russia, the competitor Alexei of Navalny. Alexei Navalny were yeah, in the airport poisoned. on a flight. He was yeah, poisoned. Was we're not supportive of that at all, that whatsoever. No one is saying that. All I'm saying is you can't control what your enemy does. Mm -hmm. You try to. America's tried for many, many years, and some of them they've been able to control. This is not an enemy you can control. We have to pivot on our own knowing discretionary that we can afford after all our expenses are covered, fine. But our expenses are not covered. Our defense is not covered, and we're trying to solve everyone's problem. Yeah. And we're spending way too much money with this. Anyways, um, gang, enjoy today's podcast. I believe, well, I'm not even going to tell you what's going to happen next couple weeks. We got a lot of uh, exciting things that's going to be announced. Uh, this last week, I had a great conversation with uh, – uh, Andrew Tate's lawyer, Tina, which, by the way, the coincidence, we went to the same high school. Shout together. out to Glendale High School. Glendale High School. Oh, She's cl cl yeah. Yeah. VHS. Went to literally three years apart in a high school years we went to. We knew some of the same people. That's right. And she happens to have been Jussie's attorney, Michael Jackson, Chris Brown, Kush, oh, all these other oh, people. Wow. We had a very good conversation. She's a beast. She's absolutely a beast of a person, a, a beast <clears> of a lawyer. Uh, and then I had a good conversation with some of the people on the inside working with Tate. Uh, and it's going to be interesting what happens the next 30, 60, 90 days. Obviously, some things that uh, was shared I can't disclose at all. But uh, we're going to see what the future looks like here with that story. There's a lot of things that the, the Romania's uh, government is trying to do. We'll see what will come out. But all I can say is the next few weeks, we got some interesting shows that we'll be launching. Appreciate you guys for joining us today. Rob, is there anything we have going on this week before we wrap up. Yes, Thursday, Roger Clemens, 9 a.m. Oh, Roger Clemens is coming yep, Thursday. Thursday really? morning. Uh, for, for all of you who love sports and you love <laughs> baseball, that small community who loves baseball, the great Roger Clemens <laughs> will be here with us. And by the way, if you don't love baseball, I love baseball. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be more of an interview for me. If you want to watch it, come join us Thursday. If not, just know what we're going to be talking about on a Thursday with Roger Clemens. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.